Transmitting to you from Old Heart Radio. record we have a group we got jameson jones we got caleb mcgrady back we got another fresh podcast for any hot dogs listening first off guys i'm just gonna say welcome back thank you thank you <laughs> yeah thanks for having me again man you guys i'm just so excited you guys want to be doing more of these that's like the biggest joy to me i'm like yes yeah. yes people to podcast with <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was going to wait till the end of the episode to say it, but I just wanted to say thank you to you because honestly, just doing this, I've connected with some of my friends again that I haven't heard from in years and like David's coming over to my place this weekend to have dinner and it's just really cool. It's all thanks to you, man. So yeah, Um, absolutely. I would second that. Well, I I appreciate that, guys. Uh, But yeah, you know, it's just great to get in contact with everybody, and that's that's awesome that you and David are linking up, man. That's like that, that's super cool. I'm doing another pod with him tomorrow. Uh, nice. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's 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 sweet. You know, I just did uh, the first episode featuring Troy, Troy Hollywood, the fucking vibe. Oh man, and, when's that coming? Uh, that I I if everything went right, it might be it might be up already but it's like we just recorded it last night and i was so excited about it like i was like getting troy uh to sit you know sit down and talk i was just like whoa no way it's dude, you want to do get- it <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, got hollywood vines but yeah he and he also dude he wants to link up and he wants to start doing more than like you know getting some of this like group action like a pop on with people so nice. i think it's awesome it's cool. good on the heart radio uh i'll stay hydrated with you buddy there you go there you go what 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 are you drinking uh it's my basic (laughs) bitch is coming out and i'm having a blackberry white cloth when i finish that one i have a strawberry and a mango so we like to stay hydrated here my uh my brother said hydrate or dihydrate one day and i was like i like that Yeah, uh, no, dude, I remember, um, I don't know, I don't remember this about drinking that often, but I remember, like, before I started, well, it was the summer me and Jeremiah started Old Heart Radio, uh, like, I was just, like, in the middle of a binge, and I was just, I remember, like, I lived right across the street from gro- a grocery outlet, and I would go over there at least once a day and, like, pillage whatever, like, random, you know, can cans of booze they had and that was like the first time i ever saw white claw and i was just mystified by it i was like oh, wait a second so this is just seltzer that gets you drunk <laughs> yep. it's great it's fucking Love great it. <laughs> so yeah i definitely like when i took those but oh man i remember drinking so many of those like in just like a couple of days i cleared out grocery outlet it was fucking crazy <laughs> I'm, I'm a total just like basic white lady as well because um, I mean, I still like all the other alcohols, but uh, various ones that I used to imbibe in more, uh, they just fuck me up now. Like, beer is too filling and it, like, hurts my head. Um, hard alcohol, I'm just, I'm too old. And yes. so it's it's wine or white cloth. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. See, we keep it really trashy in here because normally... Um, we only drink Kirkland Signature Seltzers because they're half the price. Oh, no, yeah. And uh, but Costco has been sold out the last two times I've been there, so I've had to splurge for the White Claw, and yeah. it's it's been worth it. We'll say that. But Fair double enough. the price is hard to swallow. Yeah, Fair those enough, Kirkland Sigs are good. Yep. <laughs> I just can't believe how like I mean I guess I can't believe how fast it like 
the the whole seltzer craze kind of took off but holy cow man like like white claw really started uh they caught they caught the niche and they just really ran with it and then all of a sudden boom 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 everybody was hopping on that bandwagon bandwagon it, it seemed like or at least white claw was like the biggest name maybe i'm wrong I think yeah that being like the first but yeah they were the one that they like, were the really big one <laughs> They're, they're the they're LaCroix the, of, of, of drunk seltzer. <laughs> I mean, all, sure. all the other companies like started doing similar stuff. And I, I don't know, maybe they weren't first, but they were like, to my knowledge, they were like, this is what we do. And then Bud Light um, Seltzers and everybody else came out. And, Truly kind of came at the same time, yeah, but, yeah. but I don't fuck with Truly. That's Ugh, too sweet. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> I got more pride than that. <laughs> yeah. Damn right. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> oh man, I uh, I have this. Uh, I got this sticker. Um, I put on my water bottle, and it um, it says uh, "Drink Claws, Slay Hogs," and it's got a big old fish on it. And because I like to drink White Claw when I'm fishing, and um, somebody saw it one time and they made fun of me, and I was like, "You ever had one?" He's like, "No." I'm like, "Try him." Yeah, Never saw him again, but I hope he had a moment. You know, <laughs> guy, I know you're listening to this episode. Hope you drink your white claw. Uh, yeah, drink your your white claw hot dog. Your fucking hot dog, uh, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, dude. I mean, like they're they're everywhere. Like I, like I said, like they're they're easy to they're easy to drink. You don't feel that shitty afterward. Like Caleb, you were saying, like it's nice to enjoy other types of booze and stuff like that. Like you know can you can never turn down like a, a good whiskey you know but it like i don't know i'm pat like i'm definitely well past the days for myself but like there's a certain point where you just start, you start realizing like god damn if i rail like you know 10 shots of whiskey in a night it, it definitely fe- you feel it the next fucking morning <laughs> no for the couple, next two yeah, days yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah, where i'm at like you hope you get out of bed <laughs> beer gives me the worst hangover of anything now Beer, like at least for me, it tastes the best. I'm I like it. one of those craft beer douches, so I like oh, strong yeah. IPAs and stuff. <laughs> but God, they make you feel like crap. It's just yeah. like it, it. It makes me feel like a juniper tree is just like being. It's just face fucking me. It's just <laughs> like, it's too much is- juniper. Oh, there, I mean, I've had some good ones, but jeez. I, I definitely there's a there's a spot in town you know only here on the west side called Skepenskeen, and they just have like maybe like 10 taps of you know just various like really good fucking beers and then they have like you know a fridge full of cans and stuff like that that you can choose from uh and i definitely used to like i, I jeremiah has so many fucking stories about skep if he can remember them but <laughs> but uh, but you know, it was it was always great to like go and get a, like a really nice like you know something just flavorful in terms of like a beer and yep. yeah, dude, like after a while like those things just like they make me feel so sluggish like yeah yeah they, just, they weigh they weigh me down that's for damn sure. Uh, I just wanted to interject and warn you guys um, I'm I'm fucking delirious right now because I went to bed at eleven oh my god and I've been up since uh two thirty this morning. Well, yeah, you gotta love that life. Oh my god! Damn. Yep. Was that because you just because of the trip you just took? Yeah, it was just. Uh, well, no, actually, we just did that. Uh, we we took a trip uh, last week into uh, Diablo Lake, okay. up in the North Cascades. Exactly. Definitely worth it. It's fucking crazy. It's super cold, but there's all the glacial stuff coming in, so it's like bright turquoise water anyway um but no i went i went salmon fishing today and i have like 25 pounds of flesh in my freezer now hell yeah nice hell yeah so how many how many is that in total that that you caught that was two two yeah we caught we caught (laughs) we caught a damn i think we got like um it must have been 12 all day it was a really good day um, but half of them were wild, so we only got to keep the other six. Fair enough, fair enough. Respect in the salmon law. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's crazy, too. The One of the wild ones that my friend Dalton caught was 
it was in like the 40 pound range it was enormous when i saw its head come up i was like, oh my god damn that's crazy i mean like how, how many are you allowed to like to catch is there like is there a limit I, i'm if you can't tell fairly ignorant to, to fish law uh, so it, it I, depends I, on the place and the, <laughs> the time of year and the fish and all that. But uh, for what we were doing, it was uh, you can keep two as long as they were um, not wild. So they're okay. hatchery and they have their one of their their little adipose fin. It's clipped off. That's how you can tell. You're also allowed to keep two juvenile fish as well. So you yeah. technically could have yeah. caught four total. We didn't get but, any jacks though. Yeah, it's all it's all just dependent on the run every year. And you, do you like to hunt salmon or hunt salmon, fish salmon as well? <laughs> I do. I mean, when I lived in Wenatchee, we fished. I mean, during the season, we'd go out every weekend. But now, living in Idaho, the closest fishing spot I have is a three hour drive. So, you know, for salmon at least. So, you know, I don't do nearly as much, but I have a boat. So, you know, I fish the lakes around here and stuff. So, nice. Uh, what do you usually get around there? Um, mostly fish kokanee, which are small, well, they're landlocked salmon, so they're salmon that can't make it to the ocean. Okay. So we fish for those a lot. Nice. Nice. Okay, what lakes are around, are, are around you? Like... Well, I mean, North Idaho, just right for a fun geography fact, has more lakes per capita than anywhere in the in the U.S. Like even more than Minnesota, or but and every know. lake pretty much has a good population of fish. So like ten minutes from my house is Hayden Lake or Coeur d'Alene or Pend Oreille, and they all are great fishing. So nice, nice. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool to have some spots like really close by them. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Caleb, what about you? Like, uh, what's like a couple yeah. of your favorite spots in the state? Oh man, um, it's it's well, actually, the the Wenatchee River is op- just open today for for Chinook, so that was kind of cool. Maybe I'll go do that, but that's never the case. It's always closed. Um, but shit, I mostly like go to lakes as well. Um, but like. Uh, is it Omac Lake up north is fun, yeah. but it's a special license you gotta get because it's um, on a tribal land. Oh, it's okay. really good. I, I don't know. It depends on the time of year, but yeah, I haven't been doing as much lately. Fair enough. Yeah, that that makes sense. That there's, it, I mean, that's obviously gotta be dependent on like you know the time of year and kind of you know, nature itself. <laughs> like if I if I wanted to, I could like kind of I can. We've done it before. Um, some friends and I were we go okay. This is what's open this time of year from this time, and kind of like we basically like did like a calendar. Like okay, the, we can do these things um, at these times that are like close by. Or I mean, some days we drive you know 100 plus mile round trips to go catch maybe one fish on a bad day. It's still fun. Yeah, it's still worth the trip, man. It's a trip. Yeah. Have you, Jameson? Have you taught? Have you started teaching the the kid how to how to fish yet? No, no, my go? kid, no, for sure, and he'll be out on the boat a lot. But Caleb can attest to this. My kid is like crazy ADD, okay. pretty okay. much. I mean, obviously not diagnosed or anything yet, but he's got a lot of, it, a lot of energy. Mean, and at two years old, like trying to keep their mind on anything for more than 15 seconds is a task. I was just, so, I was just picturing a two year old. Yeah, two- that's hard I was for just me. Picture yeah. that with like a fishing pole in his hand. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, it seems like it might be good to wait on that now that, now that, we're, now that it's out loud. <laughs> I would say like next summer he'll be out on the boat and then the year following we'll probably start fishing. Nice. That's cool. Yeah, that's, uh, I remember, like, I, you know, I probably went fishing a handful of times growing up. I never got, like, super exposed to it, so it's, like, one of those things, it's, a uh, I don't know, it seems like a really nice pastime in a way, because it seems like you can just kind of, like, zone out in a way, and just sort of, like, get your, get your rhythm, and just kind of, yeah. 
totally. You know, do your thing. Well, and it's kind of like, in my mind, it's a more like, I don't know, like there's a reward to it where like golfing or, you know, a lot of stuff, you just put a ton of money into it and there's nothing <laughs> you get out of it. You get a so, card that you wrote for yourself. <laughs> yeah. And so like, if I can go out and fish for a while and come back and feed the family, you know, I got my my mind right for a while and we get to eat, so yeah. Yeah, if you guys want salmon by the way, I have way too much. (laughs) (laughs) It'll go quick, you'll be surprised. Oh I'm not yeah, I I know. I'm I'm like, okay, what am I gonna stash away for myself? (laughs) Yeah, that's a good point though, man. It it is it is like a, a kind of a rewarding hobby in a way. Like you know, you go out you get something for it back you get that you get flesh in your freezer at the end of it <laughs> well and there's something primal like even if it's a small fish like you feel something when you pick a fish up out of the water that you caught and it's and it's different because i hunt too but it's different than hunting for sure like maybe i'm just a little cold but there's no remorse from killing a fish you know it's just all pure excitement Whereas if you shoot an animal, like, you you get over it, but there's still a bit of remorse there, and it's a much more serious situation. I mean, there's nothing, there's, yeah, you're right, there's such a difference between, like, I I remember I shot a rabbit with my bow one time, and, you know, skinned it and ate it and all that fun stuff, but yeah, I felt like, felt bad, and, you know, but I was, it was kind of more of like, less than, oh, it wasn't like I'm sad, it was more like, wow that was like that was heavy that was intense and now i'm gonna yeah, like utilize this heavy. the best that i can but yeah. i mean when we're just like we're pulling in uh salmon that we're allowed to keep and then we get them all unhooked and then you just take a fucking little t-ball aluminum bat and just boom yep. <laughs> just crack them on the head you're like yeah, <laughs> yeah. very different Fair enough. it's yeah. fucking metal i imagine i mean what i think ron swanson Though I do think you can eat fish for for meat. I think there's a Ron Swanson quote where it's like, fish for sport only. <laughs> and it's like, it's, it's like, you know, I think that fi- I think fish have, uh, in terms of like the respect ladder, they're probably a little further down than, than say some land dwelling animals. Uh, for sure. But I also, I think the process, I mean, not that I can, I can speak to, but I imagine the process uh, of hunting and like, kill that way it's a little it's definitely it's probably a little more jameson like you're talking about kind of primal than then yeah fishing still has like a little bit of i don't know some, some sort of like disconnect but like right there it's like you are directly responsible like you are you've got to finish it sometimes like above close and personal you know and then it's like a matter of like respecting the animal and the kill and like you know using what you can in a, in a way like you know fish it's kind of like meh it's a throw it's yeah it seems like a it's yeah. more of a throwaway so. <laughs> That's but you know like anyone who has any interest in it like it's such a valuable life lesson because i know so many people who you know don't understand the like ethical or moral you know dilemma that is to eat meat you know yeah. and if you actually go and get it yourself and go through that entire process it's really rewarding and it'll give you a totally different perspective you know on how you eat food that's cool yeah like like uh i I always uh whenever i've talked to anybody that was having having some beef uh, about it um where uh like you know they're like oh i don't i don't eat meat or i feel this way about it I'm like yeah okay that's i respect that like you do whatever you want it's your body um i mean yeah, it's fun to make fun of vegans but at the end of the day it's like i don't fucking care like just no. don't tell me about it the first 10 seconds of meeting you um <laughs> but i think i think that like uh hunters or fisher people or just people who forage or whatever that get their that go out and do that and have a more uh intentional connection to their food uh, those people and vegans have a lot more in common than I think they don't, which is ironic because the thing they don't have in common is, you know, yeah. <laughs> what divides the line. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're both like kind of there. There seems to be uh, sort of 
ethical issues that drive both those mindsets. It's like it's like the whole idea that like politically you go so so far left or so far right that you eventually just kind of full circle and you're you know all like, for sure way, way left is way right and like you know it's it's it, it, there's like similar mentalities like all i think for good purposes for personal reasons but i don't know i think you're right like diets are one of those things like i deal with that crap every single day at my at my day job where it's you know whether it's like a dietary fad that's coming in or it's just you know somebody wanting an alt milk for their for their latte it's like so, so many milks there's so many dude we have i and i have to i have to list them off to people all day they'll be like somebody will come in and be like what kind of alternative milks do you have and i'll go do you have soy coconut <laughs> almond oat or hemp <laughs> like, it's like we have five fucking alternative milks oh you guys don't have cashew no, we don't have cashew. I'm sorry, we don't have rice milk anymore. We got rid of it because nobody was like buying it. <laughs> like, you know, it's like it's a bit much, I'll say, but I don't know. It's a, yeah, the, the, those things are so weird to me. It's like because you're right. It's like one, I don't know. Like I don't think most people really care about your dietary needs, <laughs> like, so you don't need to like, no. always bring them up and like rub them in people's faces. But it happens so often and like weird passing moments. It's, at least in this particular cafe setting, I'm, I'm experiencing that. Yeah, I think people just... people should uh, treat what they put into their body and how they talk about it, similar to how they talk about what comes out of it, which is to say, don't. Oh, there you go. Like, I, I like mean, that. you know, like if you're that. ordering something, like, let them know, like, hey, I, I can't have onions, or uh, hey, I'm allergic to gluten or milk or whatever. Like, okay, cool. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll, we'll sort you out. But uh, beyond but unless that, unless you're asked about it, yeah. just shut up. If it's not relevant, your, your server doesn't need the backstory. <laughs> yeah. the, the cook. When I was seven, the cook doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, think, yeah, it's like yeah, I don't know. It's like when keto was a thing. Uh, it still is. It is still is. Although I, I, this is one of my favorite things. I, I see so many people that I know started the keto diet because they, they're regulars that come into my day, my day job. They're like, oh yeah, I'm starting keto today. So I need a 20 ounce heavy cream latte, sugar-free vanilla. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and, you know, a year later, it's like they're they're back to like a completely different beverage or whatever. And you're just sort of like, God, dude, I see so many yeah. people that flip-flop on these fads. It's like, you think about it, like, that alone can't be that great for your body I, and especially if you like have a tendency to follow those you know yeah more often it's a lot of change yeah well it just seems like it, yeah it seems like you put your body through like weird ups and downs for nothing <laughs> yeah we grew up on mcdonald's we need to just fucking stick with it <laughs> yeah look yeah look you know I, we all got a handful of decades in us okay mcdonald's did us solid <laughs> you know what there's there's very little that's better than a, a nice Coke from McDonald's. There's something special about that shit. It's great. Especially if you if you take it for free out of using a water cup. You know? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Just gives that extra zing. Yeah, exactly. Put a little extra. A taste of it. larceny. <laughs> Ooh, that crisp taste of larceny. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, man. I, I remember who was it um oh my god dude, wasn't it was it erica back in the day that ate like like went into a mcdonald's i can't remember what the like the, the exact bet was or whatever but it was like she had oh, food eat, like like just like a disgusting glob of like mcdonald's mayonnaise or something like that and like, oh, <laughs> and she did it no. I, mean, I mean that like that erica was a erica's a savage boss, dude. like she's a fucking savage but yeah, like I was just like that sounds like I just to this day I like I, I I think Troy might have the story down a little bit better, but I just can't imagine that crusty like weird colored gelatinous mayonnaise, and just like a spoonful of it. Oh my god! And then that sounds horrible. We used to yeah. do food challenges from time to time. Like uh, Eric Schreiner could eat a very large burrito, and I think he challenged Rachel McGonagall. Like my senior year, we and she showed up to psychology class and was—I don't think she got sick, but she got close. 
<laughs> she got <laughs> close. And then we would go to original J's and get the the super combo and three egg rolls. Three egg rolls. Oh, it's so good, but I've done it. I I can't do it anymore. Oh god, no, no. that's too much food. But original, original J's is just the best. Yep. Dude, still there, man. Still there, like like. <laughs> crazy to me I it's just holding it down yeah i remember going to get like fucking mondo burritos from taco del mar and like you know it's like wolfing down that small baby and then you just try and walk away <laughs> and you're just like Fuck no, dude. i'm going back to school <laughs> you think you think there isn't going to be repercussions after that my god <laughs> Well, or for like two years when Arby's had the pick five deal and we would go there <laughs> four days a week for lunch. Oh my God, dude. Or going to Sherry's and getting the heart attack special. Dude, yeah. Detroit just talked about that. Oh my God. Oh, That's yes. The, the fucking heart attack special, the pick five. Oh my God, dude. All of that was like just, yeah. You go to McDonald's, you slap down five bucks and you get like, or well, you slap down more than five bucks, but you get five fucking orders of mozzie sticks and you, yeah. <laughs> you try to tell me your heart beats the regular way after that after you engulf all of that my god yeah, i think it, technically it was pick five for 5.95 so six bucks yeah and we would get two melts two mozzarella sticks and a soda just and just nice. eat that like at least three days a week <laughs> and the other day when we were out of money we'd go to costco and get like two hot dogs and a uh frozen yogurt yeah but that was like the only there I, like during high school lunch times like costco would just flood with kids just like through the exit door oh yeah <laughs> yeah dude. that was funny that, yeah I don't know how we made it on those trips because I live three miles from my work now. So I come home at lunch a lot of the time. And most of the time, I don't even eat lunch and I feel rushed. Like, how did we make it from the high school somewhere, eat and make it back in a half hour? Yeah. Like, it was I insane. I, I, I second that because I, I sometimes do the same. Like, I live fairly close, like a few miles away from away from my work and yeah every time I come like I try to make it home it's like I always feel like I have more time than I do because I get here and then I'm like oh god no now I have to worry about getting back down there (laughs) but yeah dude we used to like I yeah we used to stretch lunch out and felt like oh man yeah but I don't ever remember being late like getting back to school late I mean I'm sure we did sometimes oh yeah I did <laughs> I, I used to go to so um I think it was yeah it must have been senior year um I don't know if you guys well Jared you had already graduated um but I don't know Jameson if you knew um I think it was Garrett Chris no not Chris um I can't remember his last name he had dreads he had blonde dreads he was in the grade below us but anyway it's not it, maybe it's Chris I can't remember his last name I'm sorry if you're listening Garrett um <laughs> Dog. you know who you are <laughs> but um i had a car and his dad at the time owned mins before it shut down like he Most had this bar and um they had uh, the little family restaurant section kind of and i would drive us to mins and <laughs> we would go in and his dad would make us this like amazing pizza he had a pizza oven and we'd just eat fucking pizza and he took us up with free lunch all the time and I was like, I'll, I'm happy to drive us back and forth if that's what we're doing. And I, yeah. I came, I came back late, um, and I went to Schmouter's psychology class. And he's like, Where have you been? I was like, I was at Mins. He's like, The bar? I'm like, Yeah. And he's like, What the hell were you doing there? I'm like having pizza? And what he's like, Is that all? <laughs> Get fucked up. <laughs> yeah, I got. I got if a, memory I serves me right, it, they served. Uh, pizza and more pizza which was like Ooh. east wenatchee legend it was really good Ooh, dude pizza and more you're right jmo that shit legend man legend their pizza buffet god damn yep and the dessert pizzas oh, oh my god they had they had that dessert pizza like they, not only the chocolate chip was boss but they had like that like a raspberry one sometimes i had like this really and the strawberry one filling. oh dude yeah those things were so good I, I, and it was super cheap. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, my mom used to take uh, used to take us there when we were like kids, like not regularly, but often enough. <laughs> but goddamn, dude, when that place closed, that was such a buzz. Because uh, it was, it was like a staple, like one of the only restaurant staples that went, that East Wenatchee had at the time. Yep. Another one deep cut is uh, um, Yogurt Connection. You guys remember that? Oh my god. Was that um... It was right oh. next to Vidal Video. That's right. right. Oh yeah, we're old. Right. Now, yeah, right we're super of... old, dude. This is early 90s we're talking about. I remember Aladdin's Castle. That shit was a jam. Yeah, that was pretty great. I do too. Uh, yeah, I, I remember that. Dude, I remember that yogurt shop. Uh, but I like I more vividly personally remember Vidal video dude I used to spend like whenever I got a chance to rent a movie there like yeah I would spend like a fucking hour walking around or like you know just looking at movie covers like, before making a decision on like what movie I would actually rent and a lot of times I gotta be honest I walked out of there with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Secret of the Use <laughs> <laughs> not bad choice solid right? choice Dude, super randomly, Dusty just popped on. Oh, Dusty's oh. coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said he had a dinner let's, with let's his mom, so I didn't want to. I was like, no worries, dude, but I'm going to. He's going to. Apparently, he's here. Is that hey, it's really? Dusty. Is that really the dust? The Dusty? It is. It is not an, a person, an, uh, an audio impersonator. Hello. Oh, my God. Ah, uh, Dusty. I'm here. Hello, Clarice. You made it. Fresh <laughs> Fresh off the family barbecue, I'm here. Oh, dude, well, thanks nice. for making it, man. I, I, yeah, I didn't want to pressure, pressure you, so, you know, but that's cool. Uh, how's, no. the, how's, how's the BBQ? Uh, that's always good. Yeah. It's smoky as fuck here, though, so. Yeah, it's, you can't see shit. Yeah. It probably just added to the flavor, though. True. I mean, it, <laughs> Got right it, it was, they were pellet grilled, so. There you go. It's the only way. We were down in uh, Portland this weekend for one of my cousin's weddings, and so driving up through the gorge was just insane with all the smoke. Yeah, there's a massive fire in uh, in Oregon, and then there's a massive one in, like Okanagan. So yeah. we're just getting fucked from both ends here. Yep, yep. It, it even rained and was windy as hell yesterday, and that didn't even help. So it rained today too, at least where I was. But... Dang. Was weird. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, so did I interrupt you, fellas, in the middle of your combo? No, yeah, how we just, fucking we were, dare you? We were just uh, <laughs> oozing about what we were talking about: Vidal video, and fucking pizza, pizza, and more. So. Retro. Oh yeah, Vidal video. I, I used to rent uh, Three Musketeers like every week oh, from Vidal video <laughs> with Chris nope, O'Donnell nope. and Kiefer Sutherland and Charlie Sheen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was my favorite movie. And the start of it, it had a had a music video um the all for one one for all <laughs> hell yeah it had a like a legit like in studio shitty music video they did and then it went into the movie that's that so weird that's beautiful. <laughs> it's a beautiful that movie. was definitely an, that was a 90s thing for sure oh my god yeah well because i mean will smith when he came out with what men in black yeah he did a video in black. A song for that and Wild Wild West. Wild Wild West. Dude. Yep. Which one That's of those true. is the bigger banger, though? Wild, the Wild Wild West? Wild Wild West. Or Men in Black. That was the second album I think I ever bought was the Wild Wild West soundtrack. The, the soundtrack's Stay better for Wild Wild West. <laughs> the soundtrack's better, but Men in Black's a better movie. Yeah. yeah Men well, in the, Black's way better. The Wild Wild West had like uh, an Enrique Iglesias song, Balamos. And then uh, there was also a Dr. Dre and Eminem song where they talk about throwing Loveless down a set of stairs or something. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. He doesn't, he's crippled. Yeah, exactly. There's a roll his crippled ass down the stairs. That's so like fucked that. up. <laughs> Ableist. Hard. Able, ableist. Oh, man, dude, what a gnarly song that was supposed to be. Yeah, that movie was ridiculous, man. I, 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 had, I remember hearing it. Um, about how Kevin Smith was set to make a, a Superman movie a while ago, like in the 90s. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and this was because originally like Tim 
it was like a Tim Burton directed like a Superman movie with Kevin Smith and the producer wanted all these wild things to be jammed into it and one of them was like yeah wasn't that, he obsessed with that spider yeah it was like he had a Superman had a yeah. fight like an ice spider or some shit like that mm-hmm. and uh and, and that, because that movie got scrapped that idea literally went from ice spider to giant mechanical spider in yeah. Wild, Wild West <laughs> that, it was like that, that couldn't let it go yeah no he was obsessed with this like spider thing yeah. he finally got it with Wild Wild West so random though like what what is that like what I don't know. but yeah that uh, in general I think it's ridiculous but Vidal Video Vidal Video rest in peace yeah. got taken over by a uh, Hollywood Video eventually. Hollywood Video yeah Hollywood right. kind of chased it out of town what within a year yeah. yeah, it was down by that, like, uh, well, it's, it's a dental place now, but it was that, there was a yogurt shop, and then it was the McDonald's. Do you, does anybody yep, remember that's... the name of the yogurt shop Jameson was talking about? I, I think it was literally called the yogurt shop. No, it was the yogurt connection. The yeah, connection okay. Was, that's what it was. Okay, you said it earlier, and, I, and like, I was like, what? I couldn't for sure remember if that was it, but you were yeah. like, like, because it had, like, a very, like, if I'm remembering correctly, it was, like, it had, like, a... Like blue and white aesthetic or something like that. It was like mm-hmm. this really. Anyway, yeah, that whole strip was really cool, and then they basically just gutted it and turned it into a dentist, yeah. which I thought was really like a, a, Oof, a strange move a, on top of that. A time. death to your childhood. But yeah, I was like <laughs> a fright. A Friday night would be going to get Happy Meal at McDonald's, going to Vidal Video or in a game or a movie or something, and then maybe hitting the yogurt shop if we were lucky. If we were lucky. I miss, uh, what was it? Do you guys remember PacSun? I know it's a chain, but like, oh God, I, remember, yeah. I, I remember when we had PacSun in the mall, I would go there, and that's like when I bought my, my first, um, like, album that I, well, not my first, but like one of the earlier albums, like, I really want this, I'm gonna go buy it. They had and, like a, just a weird selection of, like, it was mostly skating clothes, but then they around, they had like, a couple like CDs and shit they were selling there. I think it was it Pack Sun or was it there's like a there's Oh maybe a, you're thinking of Sam Goody. Yeah. Sam, Sam Goody. Goody, yeah, that's the one. That's yeah. the one. Sam Goody. I remember yeah, buying some albums there for sure. Yeah, not Pack Sun. Fuck Pack Sun. And then when you were done you'd walk down to Zoomies and get a handful of free stickers to yeah. put on everything. Yep. Throw on your snowboard. Yeah. And then for me, at a certain time, Hot Topic came along. I was like, "Oh, sweet, a whole room full of black clothes!" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, that's where I got all my band tees at. Though. Yeah, that's yep. good for that. Yeah, that looking at that wall, you go in and see what like what new band tees they brought in. I did like that was a fun thing to do there. Yeah. It actually was. And then cool finally got cool enough to where you were buying band t-shirts at concerts. Yeah, <laughs> eventually. <laughs> Yeah, I remember. I remember the fucking Sam Goody dude. Like that. I, it was a I, pretty big fucking store, actually. It was, it was pretty good. It went deep. Uh, I bought a lot, a lot of stuff there. They were way overpriced, but yeah. For sure, for sure. I remember like awkwardly taking up CDs in their big clunky plastic. Oh case yeah. The register. They had to like you know security un- case. Unlock, un- latch them, and then pop the disc out for you. And you're just, yeah. I remember. Right. I think I bought Green Day's. Uh, fucking American Idiot album there. What, like, I was like, yeah, so, I was that like, sounds oh. about right. I was like, yeah, and, and like looking back on it, I'm like, that makes sense to have bought that at a Sam Good. <laughs> Which that probably came like right at the end before they got shut down or you know, yeah. before they closed up. Yeah, because I mean, sure. I mean, like CD stores, I mean, they haven't been around in a long yeah. time. What Sam Goody had a good selection of games and movies too, though, like mm-hmm. a lot of music DVDs. But I remember buying um, Led Zeppelin's Early Days and Later Days at Sam Goody, which was just like this double pack of just like greatest hits album kind of thing. Yeah, that was eighth grade, so that was like near the end of Sam Goody. I got. Uh, that's where I bought the. Um, permission to land by the darkness oh yeah and i remember i was there with a uh, boomer you guys remember boomer headstrom oh, yeah. yeah bryant headstrom sergeant bryant um <laughs> sergeant uh, bryant sergeant, <laughs> he is, he's a he's a sergeant first class i think yeah no i follow him on instagram so. he's doing well but uh i was i was like i was gonna buy it but i was like oh it has a parental advisor they're not gonna let me and he's like they don't fucking care and i'm like are you sure yeah. and he's like give me your money 
and, yeah. and he went and bought it for me and then he goes here you go <laughs> just, I told you. yeah it was just they're just teenagers yeah. running that place yeah. they don't give a fuck well, and I know that, Hastings had never asked for IDs. So. That's the thing. Once you got old enough to where you could drive across the bridge and you could just go to Hastings instead, and then like mm. a whole new world was opened up because oh, you I could like Hastings. just Dude. mosey yeah. around Hastings for hours and find all sorts of good shit. Dude, and I yeah, I remember. Yeah, oh, for sure. Us just and like me, me, Bug, and Troy just board and we're like dude let's just go loiter hastings mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> yeah. yep. like, that's where like until they kick you out because yeah. they're closing because we're not buying anything we're just seeing what used shit they got in yeah we never check out the graphic walk, novels walk around looking at movies one right after another yeah <laughs> they never kicked me out because pat worked there forever yeah, and right. i would just go there and loiter and read books i read like four books in the store over okay well, the course of them working there they're asking for it because in that book section they had fucking bean bags. Really nice chairs, yep. and I would just go sit down and read, and then Pat would come over and he goes, and like the lights are turning off. He's like, "Hey, let's go," <laughs> and I just leave with him, and we close the store. Like, bring your kid to work day. He's just like, "All right." It was we're awesome. Going we're going home now. Oh, he's reading. Don't leave him in here. And they would special order stuff for you too. I oh, had yeah. special order, bury your dead alive for me. Oh, yeah. That's pretty Bury. fantastic. Bury your fucking dead. Did I, yep. did I tell you, Jameson, that um, I showed I showed my girlfriend, Madison, I showed uh, her Bury Your Dead, and she was like, hmm, I don't know about this one. I was like, yeah, it's pretty fucking corny, right? And she's like, it's not my favorite thing you showed me. And uh, I was like, corny? this is Jameson's favorite <laughs> thing. She's it's like, well, I'm going to make fun of Jameson a little bit more now. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing that, like, when you first told me that, I was like, it has to still stand up. That was my shit in high school. It's got to be amazing. I went and listened to it, and I was just like, holy <laughs> fuck, is this really what I thought was, like, groundbreaking? Oh, yeah. I know that feeling, you. though. Like, totally. I felt like that with uh, fucking Kill Switch. I was like, God, I thought that fucking, that one album was like the most amazing thing but I look back on it I'm like eh, it was okay yeah it just doesn't hold up I yeah. disagree Kill Switch slaps I mean I love the Howard Jones era yeah yeah, that's Kill what Switch. I'm talking about yeah. Howard uh, like I didn't their care copy, the Jesse guy but yeah. and their cover of Holy Diver is oh. legendary okay I, I'm that's glad true. you said this because um, we were talking about playlists you know today. yeah um, I was listening to Jared's playlist on the way home and I listen to Kill Switch's cover a lot. Like I, I oh, still, dude. I still listen to it like on a weekly basis. Um, and it's, that just that song takes me back. Like, it, dude, every time I hear it, I can think of this one specific memory of we were at my house and we had been searching all day to get mead. And finally, your your brother's girlfriend or something in Leavenworth came through for us. So yeah, Rex, drove, up, Rex there. drove up there, and we were just blasting Holy Diver the whole way. Yep. It's epic. Well, so the thing I was thinking, because I yeah, listened yeah. to the original in Jared's playlist, yeah. and yeah. obviously it's, it's awesome, I really like it, but then I was thinking about it, and I was like, all right, fuck me. Like, I'm going to get crucified for saying it, but I like the Kill Switch version better. No, it's got more power. Oh, that's solid. Than, uh, it's, it's more dynamic. Think, like. For sure, but man, Dio's, Dio oh, is amazing. just a powerhouse, man. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, Howard, Howard, Howard. Him like, too, him he, too. To be fair, they're standing on the shoulders of giants and we're calling yeah. them tall, but it's just like, I, I think uh, it made me think about all this other stuff because I have some. I, I definitely I listened to your guys' playlist. I don't know if you sent one, Dusty. I no, I, get, I, I didn't get a chance. Okay. I was, uh, a lot of my playlists lately are just like pop punk from the 2000s. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you, you stuff, stuff that like I get just from listening to Manchester, like a lot of front bottoms and stuff like that. So, well, you should. Uh, work in the, we saw I got to build one though. Yeah, you should build one. In the- talk about yeah, like, yours and Nick's on a different episode because that'd be kind of cool. Like it's it, it it really is James and I think a really neat idea to, like to have tried to like you know sh- uh, share like a bunch of music with each other like that because like, yeah. It, 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 Are, were you guys doing stuff that you're listening to now or like uh, back in the day? I tried to do 
yeah, there's a few throwbacks in mind, but for the most part, it's stuff that I have been listening to, like, the last couple yeah. years. Yeah, because I saw a lot of, uh, some Sturgill on Jameson. And yeah. Have you guys listened to Sound and Fury? The, the album yeah, Sturgill, yeah, yeah, it's great. That fucking album was amazing. And I was, I, I wasn't into him at all. Well, he's a rock country guy, but, like, that album was like, what the fuck? This is awesome. Well, see, that's part of what, in my playlist, I didn't know if it would land with anyone, but, you know, every year, and how stereotypical can you be, but every year about hunting season, I start listening to some, like, Western country Americana stuff, so I threw some stuff in there, seeing if any, it would stick with anyone, you know, some of the stuff I like, so. No, I like, I like Nathaniel Radcliffe, too, a lot, his his stuff's just what I always call this liquor cabinet rock yeah it's yeah, like yeah. i didn't know um, harry potter was in a band <laughs> oh, I, Rap- I love that. liquor cabinet Rap- rock. Rap- <laughs> it, it's just like <laughs> it's like it's rock but it's like something you, you know if you're just chilling on the porch yeah, you know yeah. in the evening it's like not too much it's just that laid back chill yeah it's not, yeah. It's not like super driving messes or anything like that but it's no like- i just you know you're at a winery <laughs> that type yeah. of rock so yeah, like, i just like that. i love that title i feel i feel like i feel like sort of bad but i'm not surprised either because i know how I, my brain works but when i was listening to like i think i had the most in common with jared's playlist um there's some like you know classic stuff in there i was like fuck yeah and some other things i recognized but um i i, I, I looked at him and i was like okay jared's is like like Jared and Jameson were yeah. like three or four hours long, and then I looked at mine; it was like fifteen hours long, and it's just fifteen Jeez. hours of like insane metal and weird, like really scary. Yeah, like yeah, I'm not gonna so, lie, Caleb, your your playlist was a little rough to get through because it's like, <laughs> holy fuck, dude! I listen to a two year old scream in my face all day. I cannot handle this aggro shit anymore. <laughs> I, I hadn't heard of anything on your on your list, <laughs> but so. So my stance hey, Caleb, the from first this- thing I listened to this morning. Well, I was like, I was like, this morning, I was like, I'm gonna like get up early, get to like, work, make some coffee, <laughs> and I was like, I'm just gonna start putting on some play, like some of the playlists, and, like kind of rotate through them, like put them all on shuffle. Yours was the first one. I put in some headphones and started driving you. to work, and I was just like. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's how i start my days i like i i don't know if you guys got or came across there's a song called uh um to the hellfire by lorna short um, yeah i was listening to that walking through the grocery store last night and i was like i am i fucking walking into a portal to hell right yes. now or something this is so <laughs> intense but okay so like I don't know, like I li- or this is this is Russian metal band I like called uh, Slaughter to Prevail, and um, Slaughter to Prevail. Th- they're they're in there, but uh, I, like shit like that, like that's like six a.m. Like all right, I'm going to go to work. Let's wake <laughs> up, drink some Red Bull, um, and I that's th- just too hard in the morning for me. <laughs> I think I'm, I broke my brain because like like I I listen to your guys' playlist and there's a lot of stuff in there that I. I've heard or haven't heard and I was like oh this is nice and like it's it's good and like you know there's like a difference between being like this isn't my thing and saying like oh fucking sucks but um yeah like if I'm <laughs> being totally honest like I, I think it's just the ADHD I just get fucking bored oh, like it. it's so great that constant like stimulation of that super hard stuff to keep your attention essentially yeah like um, like chris stapleton is amazing like he's incredible um super talented dude but like the i think it's it's always the drums like when the drums are chilling something like i need like trance music or like uh metal or i I need there's too much space and it makes me anxious and i'm like okay hurry up hurry up i'm just impatient (laughs) That's so a, that's a, that's I enjoyed point, him, man. but I'm, yeah, I don't know. I, it made me. It, it was actually really nice because it was like, oh, this is cool. This is my friends are nice, normal people, and they they've gone through changes, and like this is the stuff they like, and but and it it made sense and it all clicked, and it, it was cool to get to hear it. But it also made me realize like, oh, I'm, I, I, I'm, I can't, I can't just sit and like listen patiently to a nice song. <laughs> There's no blast beat. No Where's nice, the blast no beat? More nice songs for you. Yeah. 
Well, that, that you know, I think most songs can probably use a blast beat or two just thrown in the, hey, in the background. I'm gonna work on it. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and you know chill the fuck out and try and listen to some no, I, some I nicer just, I, chill jams. The, what I what I did like a lot about your your playlist, Caleb, is that it's it's literally filled with a bunch of different types of fucking like hard fast metal music, and there's also some like kind of like a there was some like sort of like uh, dance like almost like dancey metal like. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know what, I don't know what, I don't know what, what it is, but um, anyway, it was something really you can hardcore to dance to. Yeah, I was picking up change all fucking day. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but you know, I know it was, it was cool because it's like, uh, for me, it, it's you know, I, it's just like a huge list of like exposure to like a bunch of different shit that I, again, just have not like, checked out, checked out before. There's some stuff on there that I have. But for the most part, dude, I recognize, I think I've recognized like six, seven, na- eight list, maybe names on the list. And like, that's so for me, 20 that's- more than me. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, and see, I, it's, it's per- that's perfect because it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's a great introduction to like some shit to, to, to check out. You know what I mean? Same with you guys. Yeah. I, uh, on, I went through all the playlists and just grabbed a couple songs that either, I knew and like brought something up or that I like really was into um, and like Caleb I saw on your list uh, I had never really heard animals as leaders mm-hmm. and well, I've heard of them actually yeah that was really great and interesting and you know maybe part of it is not having the vocals there yeah. you know was allowed me to focus a little more and really like so or focus in on like the actual music and i thought it was great really I, like that yeah I, I, gojira the, the, the gojira guy, gojira's um gojira their drummer is one of the best in the world like, they amazing. had the they had the number one album um in the country number one rock album in the country yep. um, back right when manchester dropped their album because i was looking at charts it was like gojira Manchester and then like Olivia Rodrigo or something like that. I was like, all right. But like, uh, what is it? The the guitarist from Animals as Leaders, like he's, in my opinion, in a lot of people's opinions, I think he's one of the best living guitarists in the world. Like I've never seen someone do the shit Her- that he does. Herman Lee status? No, beyond that, in my opinion. Like it's a it's a different thing for sure. Yeah. But um it's like his writing and the way he plays is is terrifying. He's an alien. Yeah, I guess you get a lot of he is legend on here, a lot of darkness. So. Yeah, that, the Some animals classics. A- a- AFI. Oh was, yeah. That was another, uh, animals leader popped up this morning for me. It was like it like it hit. It was like oh damn dude. It's it's like musical Sudoku. You got to try and figure like what time is this in? Like what is it? What kind of fucking polyrhythm is that? What key is this? Did you guys see that? Uh, so I was, I was talking to Rex last night. I think we're gonna go see Primus. Oh, and, uh, I wanted Mar- to go that. I wanted to. So go. they're playing in Spokane in two weeks, and then they're yeah. and then they're going over to Marymore Park, and so they're they're just playing the entire Rush album of Farewell to Kings yep. on this tour with with Battles and uh, another band. I was just like. Jesus Christ, that sounds amazing. That sounds fucking awesome. Yeah, they they were supposed to do that last year, but it yeah. all got canceled with COVID because they, yeah. they announced it right after Neil Peart died. Yeah. So I'm like, God damn, I got to see Primus. So I assume on, on Corey, you hear a couple uh, classic Primus songs. But yeah, just to see them just cover an entire Rush album in crazy. its entirety. Is, that sounds crazy. Do, do you guys... Uh, um, shit, what was I going to say? You guys know uh, Dance Gavin Dance? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I just recently kind of like listened to them, and they're, it's not like my exact cup of tea, but they're incredible. And Jer- uh, Jeremiah turned me on to them. They're Especially playing in, their- in September. I think it's in September. They're playing with uh, they're playing in Seattle with Animals as Leaders, Fail of Maya, and some other stuff. So I, that one looked pretty good. So. The, they put it on our album last year. That's when I, when I started, because Jeremiah would just pull them up on YouTube and they had this one song that was really fucking good. They kind of 
emo-y, but the the like technical aspects of the guitars and stuff is really fucking good. Yeah. The, yeah, what is that? They kind of remind me of Fall of Troy. Jeremiah yeah. introduced him to me as like when he introduced him to me, he said this is like the progression of emo music, and I, 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 I yeah. do feel like that's fairly accurate. You know what I mean? And it's not saying it's like, bad by any means. I think emo music got oh, a really no. bad a really bad rap because of its image that it kind of got garnered. But, fucking uh, scene kids ruin it for all of us. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think that's what the scene does. It either ruins you or it ruins everything around you. <laughs> everything comes back to Chris Gaines, I'm telling you, man. Oh, God. He's the damn, star of all. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> we need to yeah. join in your mom's house podcast and their, their smear campaign towards Garth Brooks. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> yeah, I will say this. I was happy that I didn't see any Chris Gaines in anybody's playlist. So. <laughs> I should start listening well, yeah. to him. Well, he's not on Spotify, is the thing. Garth yeah, Garth has all of his stuff. He owns it and hides it. Yeah, he hides otherwise, it. He yeah. pay a ridiculous amount of money for it. Yeah, otherwise, it would have been together. all over my list. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's, let's put our money together and we'll get it like it's a pay-per-view. Or and I think, didn't he try and just like wipe Chris Gaines off the internet? He like, I don't uh, think you can really... I don't think he sells it. Like I think he was trying to keep it away. Maybe, but I know I know Chris Gaines is coming back. You He's guys coming we should, back, huh? We oh, should yeah. like just go ahead and uh, find out how to get his album, and then we could have a listening party. Do an Maybe. album review. <laughs> He's gonna probably yeah, think to go to a pawn shop. He's gonna do exactly what what Wu Tang did. Oh, look at that! Fo- look at that man. <laughs> no, he's gonna, oh he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna in secret write and record a Chris Gaines a new Chris Gaines album. And he's gonna just auction it off to the highest bidder online. <laughs> to a fucking far- Farmo bro that, yeah. that had the Wu Tang album for like thirteen million dollars. Oh my the god! Same, the same guy buys it. No, I think he lost the album though. Uh, yeah, the the Department of Justice seized it as part of the uh, when they seized all that guy's assets. Yeah. <laughs> I had heard that like when they, when they like kind of queued up the contract for that whole the transaction, that uh, there was like this little clause in there that Bill Murray could attempt to break in and steal the album if he so desired. <laughs> that would make a great movie. A heist. <laughs> yeah, just like- Bill Murray. That's gotta be Wes Anderson movie. Wes Anderson <laughs> heist film. Yeah, exactly. With Bill Murray. <laughs> Trying to steal a Wu Tang album. Trying to steal a Wu Tang album. It'd be so great. Yeah, that'd be that'd be freaking perfect if that if that was actually like the case. I, I don't know. The Bill Murray Wu Tang connection is is still legendary to this day. <laughs> no one will ever believe you. Nobody will ever believe you. Yeah. What a catchphrase. Uh. Yeah, uh, Jameson, when I was looking through your your playlist, uh, like a, definitely like a handful of things caught my eye. Man, you have like a, a Me Without You song on there. Uh, oh, I love you. Me Without You. Oh, they popped up the other day. I never really listened to them. They kind of popped up on just my daily mix. I was like, what the, who the fuck is this? Yeah. 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 I was like, pretty, like, oh, this is good. Yeah. See, I always kind of dismissed them back in the day because they're a Christian band. But right. at, at the same time, like it's really really interesting good music like it doesn't really matter at all yeah hey yeah. pod was a christian band yeah, yeah. yeah they were, some they positive were featured, they were in blue crush okay so you can go places <laughs> <laughs> and katie perry sang for them we've talked about that that's true before that's true. She, she kissed a girl and she liked it, yeah. <laughs> she liked it. don't blame uh, her but no, Me Without You, yeah, yeah, that's a good point, Jameson. I think there's like, for me, um, Me Without You is one of those bands that I sort of, you know, whether or not they embraced like the, uh, the label of being a Christian band, it was sort of irrelevant to me because of the content that they were putting out. And, and the other that and that kind of falls in that same department is The Chariot for me. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. gonna say. I'm like, Chari- the Chariot is very much a Christian band, but you're like, there's a lot of bands that did that. Enjoy their music, you like, know? like uh, Under Oath. Like, there's a lot of bands that started as Christian bands on labels like that, and then they kind of just like they they build like a crowd with like youth group age kids, and then they kind of like just like, okay, we're gonna be normal now. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, he is legend did that. Uh, yeah, like, they kind of slide beginning. away from that. You know, I think the Chariot in the interviews they would say like not a christian band we're just christians in a band 
Yeah, yeah that yeah, was the thing to say. That was, that yeah, was the I mean, once they get triple frankincense and myrrh, then they can go mainstream. <laughs> That's not real, is it? They don't do no, that. that was a South Park thing. Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay, okay. It's in the, it was Faith plus one, and they went frankincense or something like that. Or they went or double, double. They myrrh. went double myrrh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty. I mean, the sweet. chariot, though, like to this day, there's a couple of the chariot songs I think uh, on the playlist I put up. But you know, like some of that stuff, just it, it's just energy. It's just energy, and it rages. And like for me, it's the there's also like lots of like memories attached to like shows with with the chariot because like that was the, like one of the huge draws for that band was like was going to see them live because they were just fucking crazy. Like as like, soon as the set, and shit. yeah, dude. As soon as the set starts, like they just start fucking flailing and moving and just doing whatever, and it doesn't stop until the show is over. And and you know, like I remember seeing them the last the last time they played in Seattle before they broke up. Uh, it was at Studio Seven, and oh. yeah, which which is off and on. Like it's like I've had I've seen good good shows there, like because of the crowds that, that can get, get fit into that space but yeah. like that space itself is kind of like i don't know <laughs> well, i think studio seven's great like it's in kind of a sketchy area and oh, mind sure. you i haven't been in 15 years but you know all the metal shows that i used to go to were all at studio seven and the sound was top Dude, notch the yeah. sound there I, I, the only time i've ever been to studio seven was when i played studio seven with schmouter and so like just i just remember how the, the sound was set up with like the subs under the stage and like you just could feel that yeah, energy yeah. just blasting out there even though there was 10 people there he's good but the sound was so fucking good i've seen yeah. a lot of shows there like they i are, like the place to go see metal for sure and then seattle I mostly metal shows, but uh, I went and saw Pendulum, which is like they're an electronic band from Australia. I forgot to put them in my fucking playlist. I had enough though. Um, <laughs> but check them out; they're cool. Uh, but then they eventually become Knife Party. Like they kind of when uh, I've heard of Knife Party. So yeah. I um, we went to tell it the Pendulum after party um, show. Uh, Nick and I did this, and um, that was technically like knife party's first show because they were doing a dj set and there was some of the stuff they did know that later became out like oh it's knife party which was like oh that's kind of yeah. cool and uh the the bouncer when nick was walking in he goes this kid's got drugs better check him <laughs> <laughs> yeah on that people. one <laughs> uh, back in my rave days i actually saw a knife party at their third ever um their third ever performance because they played the first Paradiso. Oh, God, they Paradiso. blew up. That party's uh, good. I never went to a Paradiso. I went to the oh. first four, <laughs> and I mean, I don't know how much people want to hear about those, but dear God, they're it's, it was interesting. It's we'll like, leave it at that. It's an anthropological spectacle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like the water when it shit. was a <laughs> when it was a one day show, it wasn't that big of a deal. But when they moved it to a two day show, yeah. like that second day was rough. Yeah, <laughs> you're just so you're drained from the day before. Oh yeah, I, mean, oh, I had some everywhere. of those had some of those days after Sasquatch there, but uh, yep. that was a three day festival. Well, and I'm sure that that was intense but most of that's just like booze and maybe some psychedelics and most, yeah, a rave most, at paradiso mostly it's weed like booze, yeah at, yeah at paradiso it is mostly ecstasy <laughs> throw in some meth throw in some meth some ketamine oh yeah dude you gotta come down with oh, the ketamine it's insane <laughs> take the, the horse tranquilizers and bring it down <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Yeah, that was a so it was like watershed this weekend at the Gorge, yeah. which I think was the first concert in like over a year because the Gorge didn't have any last year. Yeah, so. they're they they got a pretty full schedule going. Yeah, which is good. I'm sure, Ario Speedwagon and Sticks will play there. So I was gonna I was gonna ask like they're playing they're playing at the State Fair. Hmm. 
of all the um, of all the songs in like everybody's playlist, like was there one on you know either they're just one person or each person's that like stuck out? You're like I fucking hate this. Oh, like I want to know that. I didn't get that deep into these. It's a good question. But I, I honestly don't think there's anything that like. I don't really hate music anymore, like I did back in the day. Or just like you're just like no. I mean, maybe hate's too strong a word. I mean, honestly, I mean. Go ahead, Jared. Sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say, like, I mean, like, I'm, I'm like looking through JMOs right now, and, and like just to like, you know, re-glance at it. It was the same as like this morning. Like I think honestly, like the last handful of days when I've just kind of been rotating all the all of them up through sh- like shuffle, I haven't really been like offended by anything or been like, Ugh. yeah, you know, like damn it, you guys are yeah. so much better I mean, people than me. My list, my list would look a lot like Flannery's because a lot of Flannery's thing right now is what I've been listening to a lot. Of, a lot like I love Alex Melton, like just his covers of of shit when he changes it into different genres. Uh, a lot of pop punk on here. Yeah, I don't want to blow up Flannery's too much if we're going to bring him on to talk more, but I I think I found the most stuff on his that I hadn't heard of before and was like uh, like the m- stuff that I was most interested in. Like, I mean, as for did, new music for me. Yeah. Did, did you listen to any of the Alex Melton stuff? Because I'm sure you've seen his stuff on YouTube. Uh, I'm sure like? I did, but none of it comes uh, like off the top of my head it's just like covers of your you know high school most popular songs like by right sins on tragedies but it's a country oh, cover yep yep i i have that on my list of stuff i was gonna bring up with him yeah no all all that guy's stuff is so good but yeah jameson's a lot of manchester and modest mouse which is right up my alley brand new for sure i mean it was the same thing for me it was the same thing with jameson's list like there's jameson there's just like a there's like definitely some stuff i recognize on there like i was talking about like me without you in the thermal Ooh, every time i die i haven't listened to him in forever but there's a lot of like a lot of like stuff that is kind of for me it's kind of it's kind of new so it's like, it was like cool getting introduced to like some extra stuff like there's but like uh there's like groups like the sylvan so like that. Yeah, and I, I heard them in a record store in Coeur d'Alene a couple years ago, and it was just like, this is like, I heard it off in the distance, and it just seemed like original and really good. I don't know if it it's just really to... everyone's cup of tea, but I, I really like I them. To that one. Everybody's cup of coffee. Uh, it's like one of those yeah, things no, that no, you have to I, shazam I, I as soon as you hear it. Uh, it's something that, like, that, that coffee... Uh, track is like is something that like is on a handful of random like playlists of mine anyway so that was cool but the, the black pumas out uh track on yours is probably like one that oh kind of yeah that color like, song yeah i was like damn this yeah. is fucking hot like <laughs> I've, yeah. I've heard a couple covers of that on like commercials that, like I, I listened to like on serious uh alt nation which kind of turned me on to some newer stuff and they play that black puma song all the time and i was like kind of give me like black keys vibes um but yeah there's some covers of that song like on commercials that are like oh jesus pretty good so is the the, there was one i noticed on jameson's it was dan auerbach is that how you say his name yeah so that's the drummer from the black keys that's why Mm -hmm. i fucking yeah I, i i dislike the black keys I, I don't know why you dislike the. Black I don't keys. either, because they're really good. Like yeah. I, I, Dude, I, I they're recognize so that. Good. Like, Especially no, live. No, no, no hate. Like they're talented. I, I like what they do. It's like that old vintage kind of like they use all old gear. Like there's a lot of things I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. But I listen to them just like, nah. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Did you, ever, did you ever check out uh, the Joe Rogan podcast where he like sits down with them? It's no, like a I three haven't hour, seen that one. It's like a three hour long podcast, man. Of course, it's but, three hours. It's Joe yeah, Rogan, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's honestly really interesting because, like, you know, they talk about sort of like, you know, their time, obviously, like their time in music and stuff so far. But they reference things all the time in that conversation about how like they they got really really big and it wasn't like they kept like as they got bigger kept like realizing that they just it wasn't the place for them. And I thought that was like the really interesting thing. They kind of like hmm. like they very they very much recognize the fact that they didn't necessarily want to be like a big sounding band but they were kind of you know 
pushed into that yeah. Yeah. popularity of their music yeah that was kind of i mean i think that's side to it that's probably it for like the reason that um like if i ever uh it, it's like it's so like polarized like for me it's like i either have heard a song so many times like i i could not do this again if i don't if i don't have to okay we're good and like some some groups like that like what is it, like tennessee whiskey by uh chris stapleton i love chris stapleton but i fucking nope. hate that song yeah it, it, it's a good it's a good song like it's well done but yeah it's just like i've heard it ten thousand times or i've heard the black yeah. keys that many and so but um you know conversely i i've listened to holy roller by spirit box like five times a day for the past three weeks um and i never get sick of it and you don't break you don't break. nope That's interesting. Yeah. so it's so no. It's interesting can, to hear how you guys all like listen to music and approach it. Sorry, I can see that with the Black Keys. Like, I mean, I I, I used to really like Gold on the Ceiling and Howlin' for You, but now it's just like, <laughs> like they're just yeah. sort of so overplayed. I mean, they're hits for sure. Like, and that happens with any with so many songs. Like, uh, honestly, okay. So you guys remember um, the fucking name of the guy, Gautier, right? That, that yeah, kid. Some I remember that album. Know that album is shockingly shockingly decent so it's like it's like a modern there is some good stuff on that he's he's i'd say it's like fairly similar to like you know contemporary phil collins uh and, and <laughs> is it my modern day eiffel 65 well because it's, it is it's like it's, what? Like, it's, it's just like it's just like a, it was like a rock pop album but that one track got yeah. played so much and so often that yeah. like, literally you're never going to get anybody to look at any of your other music because yeah, yeah that's and that kind of that kind of sucks in a, way, in a way man it would suck to get lumped into that like and then to try and keep creating something only to have everybody judge it against that one thing you did yeah <laughs> there's another one like that um for me that goes uh what's his name uh harry styles like i'm sure you guys have heard like that yes, watermelon sir. sugar high song watermelon sugar high yeah, it's, it's it, yeah you probably heard it but um like i've listened to that album and i was I, I was very taken aback because i was like i think it was just on at work one day with jeremiah and i was like this is really fucking good like i i like this which yeah. is surprise it surprised me yeah. yeah those kind of things can't sneak up on you man like, it, it happens sometimes just like damn am i jamming to this <laughs> <laughs> who's this fucking guy oh he was he was a jonas brother well, I guess no, so. it was One Direction. One Direction. Oh, whatever. Same fucking thing. Yeah, not much difference. I mean, yeah, just, it was a X Factor British created boy band. Yeah. yeah. By Simon Cowell. It was created by Simon Cowell. <laughs> yeah. There's this, uh, there's this weird uh, sort of like, like movie night thing that's being put on by the Port of Olympia in town here. And every night that they're doing one before the movie, they have some sort of like singer performing, right? Oh yeah. I was looking at the sheet recently and all the singers for every day are like somebody from a like singing contest, like contest. So there's like a guy from America. Oh, God. Like, there's somebody from The Voice. There's somebody from like another one. And I was like, Jesus Christ, how many, how many of these people are out there making careers off of like the episode that they were on? <laughs> Hundreds. <laughs> they made it to Hollywood. I was like, what are these people singing? Like, what are they like? Like, I found out that they're doing three-hour sets, and I'm like, what? Yeah, That's I'm like, oh, dear crazy. God. I'm like, what are they singing? Are they singing all covers? Are they singing like originals that they've come up with off of their voice fame or whatever? I don't know. <laughs> kind of on that note, I don't know if you guys would remember this, but I remember when I was a kid living in Wenatchee, and there was that guy. Um, they called him T-Bone who just sang country covers and he played shows all over <laughs> Wenatchee for years. Never like, heard of him. Yeah, I re they put flyers up. He would play at, uh, what's the park in the middle of town? Centennial um, Park. At yeah. Centennial and like the guy, I mean, maybe it's because my parents were super into generic country music, but this guy like made all sorts of money just singing country covers in Wenatchee every weekend. T-Bone! Okay. That's, That's a solid gig. Yeah. I've T-Bone. <laughs> hey, if, if you're doing it, you're getting paid, you're having fun. Cool. Do yeah, it. Yeah, I guess. Oh, I guess. Man. I mean, I don't know. I just... 
I don't know. I think I'd, I'd get tired of it. There's this guy. There's this guy who busks outside of the farmers market every weekend here, and uh, he does like I don't know. He's he like tries to cr- like be like a crooner, you know? He's like up there, like ooh. Uh, yeah. it's, 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 but he's always wearing like a full, a full denim outfit, and he has like, a, a, a oh, stereo denim. that he like plays the music on right next to him. And it just like he's just always just off key enough oh, that you just like it just doesn't work. Oh, it just yeah. it just don't work. But he's there every fucking weekend, and like people are always eating it up, dude. Like he's always got like a handful of people like like checking out his action. And I'm just like, what is so fucking fascinating about this? People are toned up. Some people are toned up. Crooner's gonna croon. He's crooning and he's getting he's succeeding. He's I, I saw no, he's just swimming in the slits. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I saw I saw a guy who was he was I guess he was busking or maybe he was just being a weirdo, but um, oh, I love you, it was just at a random rest stop on the way that I was driving to Spokane. Um, it was when I came over that time you were at work, Jameson. But um, uh, there was this guy at the outside of the men's bathroom, at, like just a rest stop in the middle of nowhere. And he's sitting on like a little crate, and he's he's got one of those like floppy hipster hats, and um, he's playing his guitar. He's actually really good. He's like just some fucking Neil Young wannabe weirdo, and it was just like oh, all the miles that I've traveled, and I it was would like, walk five hundred miles. <laughs> it was good, but I was just like I just had to pee, and I don't. Whenever I see someone like doing that. Even if they're good, like sometimes I just want to like just beat them with their guitar. Be like, shut up, stop. You're just not like not here, that not here. Just, that just sounds like if you've ever played Red Dead Redemption Two, <laughs> just an NPC along the road I know that you come across is playing the guitar and then you just murder. Yeah, that's, <laughs> like, you know, I'm glad I wasn't the only one who did that. <laughs> For no, someone no. who loves music so much, I hate music. Yeah. <laughs> you just fucking NPCs. <laughs> well, this NPC was polluting the air with his noise. Yeah, that's when you just take him down. Hey, man, I appreciate you being that. a climate warrior for all of us in that way. <laughs> you know, polluting, polluting our airwaves. <laughs> yeah, Fucking hell. Fucking hell, bastards. There's people that do that all the time around here. Like, there's this huge street scene in downtown Olympia, we'll call it. Uh, and there's there seems to be always be like like at least five kids with like guitars that have, that have two maybe more missing strings that are always jamming around town. God, and, and it never seems to like really sound that great, but they do always seem to have a couple bucks in their cap. So uh, I guess you know, tenacity. Those are, those, are, those are pity dollars. Pity dollars. <laughs> They, they probably assume you're homeless. I mean, at least you're doing something, trying to the, get some cash. The classiest busker of all time, though, was probably James McLaughlin. I'll say that. He yeah. was always, James is good. He was always out there, like, playing, like, fine pick. Like, he's, like, picking his guitar and doing all this, like, fine, weird Spanish music. And, like, oh, he had the looks, too, though. So let's let's not forget that. That's he had true. the looks to back it up. <laughs> That's true. He was, he was out there to get it. <laughs> <laughs> Just doing it for the love. Yeah, dude's doing it for the love. Oh man, uh, Jameson, I wanted to bring up that there's like another track on your list that I wanted to bring uh, bring up. Is the, the the group Human Factor? Yeah, right. That, that yeah. Song, heard of that. song Alf. Like I had not, I I hadn't heard of Human Factor, but Alf like came on shuffle, and I was just like, I was just I like I was immediately into it. Like it was like that whole is that like a whole album that's on there? Yeah, so it's all an album, and I would suggest, you know, it all just kind of flows into each other. Like, you should listen to that album, like, in its entirety, you know, just go through. Yeah. And it's just kind of seamless. Like, there isn't really a track break or anything, but it's, I really like it. You know, it's kind of got that, like, somewhat psychedelic rock, um, but a little bit on the heavy side. I think it's great. But. Is it kind of like uh, Sturgill Simpson, where that whole album is like, it, it's like each, at this end of every song is the changing of the channel? Um, where I mean, it I don't flows even, together. It definitely flows together. Like, I don't know if you guys ever heard um, 
like did you ever listen to explosions in the sky oh yeah kind of like kind of like one of those albums where it's all just kind of a giant piece you know that's i mean they split it up so that you can listen to it however you want but it should really all just be played in one that's cool that's that's always something i appreciate about like like an album like sometimes you you really craft like something from front to back and though you can like you know pick things out and sort of you know say like that stands alone like somehow like making an entire album work in like a good flow is just so i don't know once you come across one of those it's so juicy like i feel like it's yeah it's like a certain layer to like make to to, like that creative project that uh, is necessary but not always there some i think some people just slap together like you know their 10 tracks and call it good but yeah sometimes you can come you can form intent behind the, the list the whole track list but that's cool. I'll have to check that whole thing out front the back, man, because I was really yeah. into it, like, right, right right, off the bat. Like, it started playing, I was just like, ooh. Oh, and you're yeah. like, there's this heavy yeah, yeah. side to it that kind of, like, kicks and you just, you know, it, yeah, I was Well, and I don't even remember how I found them, because it's not like they're a, a popular band at all. Like, if you go to their Spotify page, like, they have, like, 6,000 views or something like that on, you know, <laughs> really? the top tracks. Yeah. So it's not like they're really, and I think they're from, like, Russia or you rain or something and so it's i i have no idea how i came upon them but i you know found that album and it i think it's great it's like Um, i don't know if you guys ever if you came across it i shouldn't have made that playlist so fucking long but (laughs) i got carried away but there's a there's a lady on there called um ivor um she's yeah i was looking at that just earlier so she's uh that specific album i mean her other stuff's cool but that was one that took me by surprise where it's like how did i just find this but um I, I, she's like classically trained singer but also like uh she's from the faroe islands which is a island off of denmark um yeah. so she sings like the kind of like some kind of traditional styles of you know that area and it's just, it's it's one of those you know kind of somber uh really dreamy uh, scandinavian electronic pop albums i guess but oh boy i mean well they, she can sing for sure track, tracks like camel dance floor you know it's got to be dreamy. oh I, oh <laughs> igor igor's the shit that that album oh my god so i got when was i was living with jameson was that who, who you were just talking about no no but um, oh, I thought you that's said the igor. other one no, uh, I, I, Ivor. Ivor. Oh, Ivor. I'm sorry. Yeah. My no, you're good. But bringing up Igor, great, great job, Jared. Um, because good for <laughs> I did, you. I did good anyway. Star. Old heart you did good. <laughs> um, but I got mm-hmm. obsessed with that album when I was living with Jameson. And uh, they're a French band and they have a bunch of different musicians. And um, I don't know what language they sing in, but there's like, there's opera, there's like baroque there's um uh you know symphonic stuff and like some kind of uh folk instruments but then like it's like really intense and like the drums are crazy and there's like noise electronic it's it's a fucking it's a wild ride but that whole album is it's the best album i've heard in a very very long time so thanks jeremiah for showing me that (laughs) yeah you can i saw on your your playlist, Jared, you have um, a song by The Thermals. Yeah, well, I remember and, The Thermals. Yeah, and I i don't know, we probably all found them. I think they were on Skate 2. They had one song on the... Oh, I love those games. Yeah. yeah, they're so great. But that whole album, I found them on there, and I, that album with that on there, and I, I put a couple of their songs on my playlist, but they're so good, but... They broke up like last year. They had been like one of those, yeah, like small punk bands from Portland. They'd been together for like 15 years and then they broke up last year. But when they did, I bought that album with, I think it's Here's Your Future is the name of the album, but I bought that on from them and they all signed it before they sent it to me. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think you can just go on their website and you can buy any of their albums on vinyl and 
now that they're broken up, I don't know if they'll still sign them, but they just sign everything they send out. That's cool. Hey, that's one way to yeah. keep, the, keep your fans cool. Yeah, the Thermals, man, they've, they've like, there's like a good handful of their albums that like have stuff on there that I really dig, and, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it is, it's kind of nice. I always like that kind of, that just like punky energy that they have, they always like brought to their to their track. But Here's Your Future in particular is like such a, such a, such a fun, it has like, it has just such great imagery in the lyrics as well as like uh, some good energy to the whole track. And so that's Yeah, because I, if I remember that. right, that whole album they wrote like if i remember right they wrote it um as like a protest to the iraq war and george w bush in particular because it's all like the whole album is based on like religious extremism you know is what they said and yeah it's really good be right back on a phone call here yeah, it's cool, man. I, 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 nope. There's like that, and then there's like... <laughs> Dusty Bale. They have this like older track called like No, no Culture Icons that uh, is really cool, because like, for me it's just, you know, it's kind of a, you know, a reminder of like anybody can, you know, anybody can be a culture icon. There's no point in like, you know, really like hailing certain things. Anyway, it's, it's just another cool track, but like, like I said, you can find some like, really good stuff lyrically or musically on just about every single one of their albums i'd say and i think yeah, yeah. i think for you know to, to be able to like look back on that as a career for a band that's probably like got to feel good you know to be able to say like not every you know there's not a there's not a single album that's probably a dud i'd consider from the thermals. well and they're just like they aren't really like straight punk and they yeah. aren't really pop punk either i wouldn't really call them pop punk no, so they're I, I hate to use the term indie but like they, they they started popping out when indie music got really big and started becoming this broadly defining term and, yeah and, and you know for what it was like i don't think they had they, i would consider them like some sort of like indie punk band because like, yeah they, yeah they, they kind of played into both of those but they're but i don't know like the thing I always liked about them most was that they had that sort of punk energy. Like they were yeah, for riding, sure. Riding some indie coattails, but they were kind of like that rougher sort of like side, the side to what could be indie music at the time when they were popping out. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And then also looking through your list, just some of the like classics, like Sweet Leaf by Black Sabbath, which oh, yeah. is like that's not one of their like signature songs but it's just like it's so good i love it dude uh yeah i you know i don't i don't like that spotify only has these re, like their remastered album albums right. on there um it's kind of nice because you know whatever like, things are kind of brought out a little better but uh it's you know for me like sabbath is yeah like i like sweet leaf and 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 obviously like war pig are two, two big sabbath songs but war pigs i should have put that on there also just because it's fantastic there's this like i had this really vivid memory i uh walking to work one morning it was like probably like 5 30 in the morning and i had just gotten downtown and somebody was like just coming up from like a late night or something like that and they're driving this truck right by me and on the side of it, they had spray painted. Uh, they, they just had spray painted. Listen to War Pigs, and so it was like, it was like, like 5:30 in the morning. I just like see this guy drive by, and I like immediately switch what I'm listening to to War Pigs. And it was just like this like magical moment. I was like, thank you, thank you, random Mr. Stranger. Like, yeah, I think Nib was Nib a, a big song. Yeah, and I B. And I B. I love that. Song. Uh, One well, like Snowblind, like Sabbath is oh, I mean, so Sabbath good. Is iconic for sure. And they're kind of like I don't know. I like Sabbath now so much better than I like a lot of the traditional classic rock bands. Yeah. Like yeah. I would much rather listen to Sabbath than Zeppelin or Zeppelin. Still is a yeah. one of my favorite. I, like, I agree with that. Zeppelin has this like a soft spot in my heart when I first got into like playing guitar or like I just ate up anything they did and like even to this day like I, I'll still like rediscover songs I completely forgot about like I remember watching this show called Sharp Objects 
and uh, Led Zeppelin definitely sold out. It was just like this is 2019 or something, but uh, like Led Zeppelin one was heavily like featured throughout that entire show, yes. and the the final scene ended with them figuring out who the killer was or whatever, and then it cut into the, in the evening. And there's that, that that riff in the in the evening where it's just like super hard. But I was like, oh my god, I forgot how good that one is. Oh, Dusty, I because I, I think I, I would I would say you probably would win the Zeppelin Super Fan Contest, but um, I'm, I don't think I'm too far behind you. Cause, but um, I okay, how do you feel about the song? All of you guys. Um, all of my love by Led Zeppelin. I always like that song. People hate on it because of the keyboards and stuff. No, it's not the keyboards. It's just terrible. But you got to think of the context of that song. That song yeah. is about Robert Plant's son, Carrick, that died as yeah. a child. Well, he was really fucking sad when he sang it. So that it, whole period of Led Zeppelin was really fucked up. Yeah, I would say. I don't know. I mean, like, yeah, I. I mean, I. I wouldn't say that's my go-to Zeppelin song, but. Yeah, no, I it's just like, and it's uh, somehow it will always be played on classic rock stations, which it's, excuse me, it but, is uh, weird. I mean, well, it's a see, song about like, a dead kid. Like, I'm not going to say I don't like Led Zeppelin because I'll listen to any of it, but it's I, not for everybody. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'd much rather listen to Sabbath or Pink Floyd or oh, Rush. God. God, I, mean, time, I mean, I mean. Yeah, Dude. Led Zeppelin's probably like they're they're not in my top ten even of classic rock bands. Yeah. I went through this really heavy Pink Floyd period last fucking May or June after I broke things off with this one girl and just like just got super wit like into them and yeah. went back and like watched you know uh, the Dark Side of Oz mm-hmm. and then I got really into like the the 90s David Gilmore, which was the definition of cool. I mean, that guy, I'll have to try to find a picture of it. He's just like oversized suit blazers and oh, this yeah. disgusting long hair, but he's just like shredding. Yeah. No. It's like, dude, it's so disgusting, but uh, whatever. Is it, does he tour still, or is it Roger Waters? One of them still uh, tours and plays a lot of stuff, they, like as a one man show. They both do because they, they kind of like, alternated on songs but right. sometimes Roger Waters will play songs that David Gilmore sang on because their voices are, are slightly similar yeah um, but Roger Waters is the much more political one yeah so yeah. Um, like if you look up on YouTube uh, Roger Waters three like pigs three or whatever it's just all just this Trump hate is there like painting the old picture was all like political shit but now he's like redoing that image to make it look like oh now we're just hating on Trump for this and it's just like alright Roger uh, yeah let's just let's, stick to the let's music let's just stick to the music yeah, yeah. yeah. But, seriously, but yeah. I mean that's the thing with music you know I tried to ignore the political parts of it but it is yeah. what it is it's, it's- it's hard to do that with some characters, some some people, because they really like jam it into into the periphery wow. of their music. But uh, I don't like, know. I mean, like, yeah, fucking way bright that, eyes. Oh, <laughs> which James, <laughs> you had a bright eyes track on your on your playlist, and that was the first time I I, I, I haven't listened to bright eyes that much in the last like handful of years. And I was like, it took this is right my favorite to, version of uh, oh, David Gilmore. Look at that. OMG. <laughs> Solid. That flowing hair, oversized coat. I guarantee you, nobody gets no shoulder pads than. in that coat, though. Those, that's, those shoulders no. are all him. That's steel. <laughs> that's steel. They, they fell Lord of the Rings on his shoulders. They probably had a flash flood warning from all the pussy juice in the crowd. <laughs> it was like a Gallagher, a Gallagher comedy show. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has to bring their tarps with them in the front row. Wow. It's actually a reverse Gallagher, so oh, the yeah. band oh. had to get covered up. <laughs> it has like a sneeze Gallagher. guard, like at a like at a like at a salad bar. The old, the old had a splash guard on the stage. <laughs> oh no! Night is David Gilmore. 
I never knew. I never knew yeah. the wildness of those concerts, man. Hey, I mean, he, he was fucking Kate Bush, which they, they covered that up, and she was clearly 16 at the time. But, yeah. Thanks. Oh, oh, oh yeah. man. Well, well then. Yeah. Uh, uh, we don't talk about tis, that. Tisk, tisk. Yeah, that was the thing. I, 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 for some reason, like, my the playlist I, I put together, I, like, didn't i don't know i i didn't put the floyd on and i was like i was thinking about that when i was like making it and i just like i don't know i was like i figured yeah i could like one i couldn't figure out what i would want to put on there in particular but two i was just sort of like i don't know we all know we floyd all, we all float, know floyd, yeah you know what I mean? the um I, it's just like there's a couple songs that always cut deep with me with pink floyd and like sure. time is always time, one yeah yeah like yeah. It's like you wake up 10 years is gone behind you just yeah. those lyrics there and you're just like and the solo oh. Oh. And as you get older like you feel those lyrics you're like oh fuck 10 years is fucking flown by well, and true, you know speaking of albums that you can look at in in entirety um like the wall is kind of like the classic <laughs> one of that that i can think of you know like if you if you're gonna listen to the wall sure you can pick out the hits from it and another brick in the wall part two is you know yeah. super classic and whatever but that album like looked at in its entirety is just like I, I, it's one of the best rock albums out there and most people would say they you know they'll take dark side of the moon but i i think the wall is a much better album in my mind yeah. it's more meaningful in waves like well like, animals for sure is another one that's that, great and i mean the wall is like yours good too yeah it's, it's, like, it's you can rank their albums for sure but it's there's no right rank. No. Yeah, yeah, it's like they're, they're all going to be different. User dependent. You know, user. The thing about Wish You Were Here is uh, like, and it, this is back from last year when I really just did this deep dive into Pink Floyd, and uh, like even the cover of the album, where it's the, the Burning Man yeah. shaking the shaking the, it's supposed to be like a business executive, so it's it's supposed to be kind of a play on them selling out after. Dark Southern Moon got so huge, and then getting burnt. So they were the Burning Man and the shape, the handshake. Okay. And so that whole album is kind of a, like a retrospective on them blowing up so much after Dark Side of the Moon. Because I didn't realize how how many like the Wall didn't come out for like five years after that. I always always thought that it was like Dark Side then the Wall. No, the Wall was like. Way like later, 80s, wasn't it? It was like, yeah, like seventy nine, or, or might have even been way later than that. Maybe eighty two, eighty three, but yeah, just like it was, it was a lot later than I had thought, or than I had remembered. So, yeah, but let's see, nineteen seventy nine. Yeah, that makes sense because I think Dark Side Moon was early seventies, seventy three. So, yeah. So like the end of the psychedelic era. Well, and you can go look. I mean, if you want psychedelic, you can go back to like Pipers at the Gate of Dawn. Yeah. Or Adam uh, Hart. Adam Hart. Hart, Adam Hart. Oh. <laughs> God, Rex loved that album. We listened to it so much in, in the a sh- while. Dude, that trumpet part. Oh. In that, uh, oh. I just remember being so fucking high, <laughs> and that trumpet <laughs> kicking in yeah. and being like. Yep, I made it. This is peak life. <laughs> I made it. I made it. But there's a whole scene where they're just yeah. eating breakfast and they're recording. <laughs> well, I, uh, like, for a while I was trying to, I got a really good deal on an original copy of Dark Side of the Moon and The Wall on nice. vinyl. And so I was like, sweet, I'm going to start collecting all, like, original copies of Pink mm-hmm. Floyd albums. So yeah. I found a copy of Adam Hart M- Mother which is an original pressing but it was a pressing from Argentina and so I ordered it and it took like three months to get here and it is the shittiest pressing ever oh, like no. it is so thin and warped and sounds horrible and it's in good shape it's not scratched yeah. or anything it just 
like they use the cheapest vinyl imaginable imaginable yeah so i used to have all those albums on my on my wall in my room I was a kid i was, was telling rex about this the other night because we were talking about like since in the shop uh his dad has like every beatles album now framed oh, wow. in, like, sequential order and i remember having wow. meet the beatles i didn't have the so i had the album like the cover and the, the vinyl but i didn't have the inner sleeve mm-hmm. and so like if you had all those stuff in like a good condition the album's worth like 1200 dollars or something crazy yeah. now but yeah i just remember like having that just like <laughs> on my wall with a thumbtack through it <laughs> no <laughs> what? Those things like covered my entire wall. I mean, I, I bought like three copies of Led Zeppelin Four just because. On Led Zeppelin Four, you had the, the sweet cover of the man with sticks, and then when you opened it up, it turned to a poster of this the the guy on the hill, the yeah, yeah. cliff or whatever, kind of like that poster everybody had that had the last you know set of lyrics. But yeah, same thing with that like Rush. But yeah. It's my thing, collecting records. What, what, like, is there an album or like a song or something that you guys are stuck on right now, or that's like, that's the one that stands above? Yeah. Like old stuff or like just, just current what, music? Whatever you're listening to, like right now. Yeah. The look, man. Like, I've been really meaning to listen to this Mars Mouse album. I've just been putting it off. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I love I love We Are Between Now. It's, it's grown on me. It's just a classic, modest mouth song. For sure. But, yeah, I'm gonna look at my searches. I've just been listening to a lot of nostalgic pop punk shit lately. <laughs> my reoccurring. Uh, oh my gosh, dude. I mean, if. Like, Ooh, the shins. For sure. Like, I, I, I mean, eternally listen to Deltron 30. Like that, fucking that, love that album. You know, yeah, like that I was so, I was so stoked too. when I saw yeah, that on the yeah, journal. I was like, yes. Oh uh, man, yeah, that exactly. Like that's just one. Like that directly influenced uh, a project for me, me and Jeremiah for sure. I mean, like ours, our shared love of Deltron, like created the the project for Revenge, 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 which is. Uh, I don't know if I told you guys this. It's basically just a. Uh, uh, pair of intergalactic android wizard brothers who travel <laughs> through space and time and go on go on hip-hop fueled adventures <laughs> so. that sounds awesome yeah. i've heard of it i don't i think i've listened to it in the past you showed me some but but yeah i Delta remember 30, 30. like middle school days or even early high school when we were playing in bands and i stated my love for deltron 3030 and caleb was the only person that would back me up and rex and elliot and everyone would just give us so much shit for listening to like a hip-hop album so good and, but was it's it, yeah. perfect yeah was deltron in the gorillas he um, was he was, yeah, he worked a member in it for some of the songs yeah he had some he had some spots but yeah i mean his and some of his solo stuff's really good too del funky homo sapien yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, I mean, I mean, and there, dude, the, the album that came out with thirty, was it thirty thirty one or something like that? Or, or... Yeah, they. Uh, it was Deltron thirty thirty. Oh god, I can't remember. Like, and it's okay. It's, it's okay. not as good. But it was, it was this weird. I remember like being weirdly like I was so stoked to hear that they were doing it, and then after like after it came out, I ingested it. I was like, it's a good album. But I think it's just titled I, Event Two. Yeah, I think I was yeah. so hyped up because like the first one was like to me it's legendary. Just, it's just so legendary. Yeah, legendary. Where it's you know this like great mix of like really good music, really like poignant lyrics, as well as like really like kind of fun skits and things in between that sort of just keep you like interested in this like weird universe that's being built. But. I don't know, yeah. Like that, that, they're always in rotation, man. Them and um, fucking uh, that Rush album, Permanent Waves, is like a, is like an album that I'm constantly listening to. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty. Well, uh, that's a dragon. It's not a cat. <laughs> <laughs> he has a pet dragon. Lova, little Dova. What 
about you, uh, Jameson? Do you have anything that you're just kind of like, like, great, like, you know, it's probably like at least a few times a week or at least. You know, you're yeah, the only thing that I like continue to come back to is that new Manchester Orchestra album. Oh yeah. That I got from. I mean, we talked about it before, but I got from Dusty off this podcast and. Um, I'm still trying to get into some of their older stuff. Dude, you gotta do uh, Black Mile to the Surface. Because you, if, once you understand the whole... Because usually Manchester tries to tell this crazy story throughout their albums. And Black Mile to the Surface... And I talked to Jared about this on the podcast. The whole the weaving through of that whole album was this one continual story. And that like culminated in this guy shooting up a fucking grocery store and his like uh his girlfriend ex-wife whatever happened to be in there that he killed at the same time it was just like so she funny. was so fucking heavy i'll check but, it out because i know like this newest album which is it's like my only exposure at this point like it definitely has a different feel or tone than their other like hits that are on the top of their yeah like shake page. like shake it out wolves at night those are good but um yeah. i mean jared tur- jared really turned me on to like um uh, was it something like make everything out of nothing or whatever that album was oh, yeah, yeah yeah well i, I mean which I, is I, I think it's a it's bangers a pretty, yeah it's a pretty solid album honestly and lyrically there's some really interesting content I mean, that's the thing that I, I think I like most about Manchester Orchestra is that lyrically, they continue to, like, the, the, it continues to impress me. Like, it, it gets deeper and yeah. more depressing, but I, I like it just but the, but the music, as, the dynamic, as humans. The dynamic of the yeah. music is, like, it, 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 like, gives you these really, like, uplifting moments with, like, it's, it's like depressing the, moments, lyrical moments sometimes, and it, like, it just creates this yeah. interesting, like, paradox for you as a listener you're just like yeah that's a, that's the thing about that's the thing about black mild surface is like it, it peaks with him shooting up a grocery store going to jail but then i think it ends in like a different point of view where um i think i always think of this like it's a brother's point of view where the like you you're glad that you you you, you crawled through miles of shit to get to where you are and like it has this kind of uplifting end to it as dark as that album is yeah well yeah and that, like, again i think that's one of the things i think that i like about that group is that they've they've found a way to like set a set a serious tone uh i don't know while not being like uber depressing it's like like, yeah. you know, like sonically, you know. I mean, <laughs> but until you like listen to the lyrics, and you're like, oh it's, fuck. Like, Even like, like uh, simple math, that song, fucking Pensacola. Oh yeah. Where it had that 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 like, that good hook of the uh, alcohol, dirty malls, Pensacola, Florida bars. Yeah, like, but then there's just like the whole like depression he's feeling of being on tour, like missing yeah. his family. Yeah. It's. Uh, it's it's, I don't know, Manchester's gonna be one of those groups I think that, like, I'll probably always look back on for myself, you know? Is that the, like, that's a, that's a good question there. Like, what about that in your playlist? Like, if there's, like, one, uh, group that you think you'll, like, always kind of, like, reflect back on, is there, is there, is there something in your playlist that, like, a Kind of like a nostalgia, a nostalgia yeah. pick. Like, one that you, you think, always, like, like... In, a, in a decade, you'll still listen to that fucking that fucking artist you're like oh did this artist had a soft you know soft spot in your heart not for the like musical um prowess of the song or whatever but it'll always have a place in my heart is ohio is for lovers the first song i put on that playlist and it's not a good song it's really not but it is just so like so important it takes me back and just so many nights at the at the estate or i mean and if you just say any of those lyrics around our friends group there's a good chance we will all bust out in song like it is just it will always have that soft spot 
Yeah. <laughs> just those I, nights of just just shouting the lyrics to that song at the estate. <laughs> <laughs> and like even somebody like Caleb who is never into that type of music really I'm sure you know all the lyrics to that song no, basically all of them yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can get yeah. through the chorus <laughs> yeah I know the chorus I, just that. Actually, I, was, I was in the shower the other day and I came out and I was just like I, I just my brain just starts going spare me just three last words and I was just like <laughs> fuck <laughs> Dude, I gotta, I gotta get you a copy. Of, I gotta get you a copy of that Shimoner show because I, I listened to it with Flan. I watched it with Flannery, and then I watched it last year with like Jasper and Jeremiah, and like Flannery just trying to do his screams during it, which he was very good at the scream parts. <laughs> exactly. It was just like wave. It was like it was. It wasn't the screamo scream. You know what I mean? Like, no, but he he Flannery could like do that like emo-y scream really well. I always thought he was. I mean, at the time, uh, he was definitely like I couldn't scream worth shit, dude. Like my scream was like, ah! <laughs> 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 like, like so it was like I remember when we when we started covering that song, it became like that that was like a necessity almost. It was like, he had to do like, the backups. Just, yeah, you need to do the backups. I need screams. your help. Like, because yeah. I can't do it. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll say, not to toot my own horn, but I've definitely developed my scream since then. So yeah, it's a little it's more fun to work I, was, I was actually just just practicing part of a, a shm- you know, hopefully Nick Nick posted up like this like random riff for a potential schmouter idea. And uh, I was like practicing some, some lyrics with it the other day. And I was practicing my like deep, just guttural scream by screaming mantar over and over again. Yeah. I was like, it was, it was so much fun. Dude. I hadn't done it in a while, but I started in one place and I just slowly got, like, got lower and lower and lower. And I was like, oh, lower and lower and lower. Yeah. Oh, man, I love all those those videos on YouTube, like, where there's vocal coaches and they're teaching you, like, you have to do this so you don't hurt yourself and do that. And oh, yeah. it's like, I, I, I just super, I, I, I not great at it or anything but i i'll do it in the car and, and practice and try and it's just it's fun it's just it's fun, fun to learn about it's fun to get, try and crash that energy out of your body. just make some noises yeah although i don't think i've ever like if i'm thinking about it i don't know if i've ever really like full on i mean i guess with the waldos i did some screaming and like for for sunsets and whatnot for sure but like yeah like schmouter you just had like Schmatter just had random bouts of screaming. You yeah. Know? And it was all inward screaming at that time, too. Yeah. Oh, especially the, the <laughs> yeah. opener, Deep the opening song. Uh, yeah. Yeah, dude. The, uh, was it the Waking the Cadaver intros? Yes. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, any, any scream that's randomly on the, the rise and fall of Hats McGavin is, is probably. Is Big probably show important. laid waste. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> good God. Uh, man. But yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I don't know. Like, it's a. Uh, yeah, classic. The scream, man. It's, uh, it's, I'm yeah, no. Sure. I saw, when I saw. I defend my scream now. I just. You know, when I saw, I, I was. I was going to say, I was, I was surprised to see Bright Eyes in Jameson's list because I, I thought maybe I had made Jameson sick of Bright Eyes. Yeah, I mean, back I'm in the not, day. A, not a big Bright Eyes guy, but looking. I don't know why just a while ago I pulled up their their uh, page on Spotify and that's like a newer song and I listened yeah. to it and I really dug it so I just remember like I'd give you a ride to school and for some reason Road to Joy would always be playing oh, <laughs> like, every day <Yep. laughs> dude that album was fucking awesome though yeah. Wide Awake It's um, Morning dude, that album yeah it was like a, that album was on heavy that, I, I mostly got that from David. David I, and fucking Scott. Yeah, I always think of Scott Weiss when I think of Brian. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, oh. If I wouldn't have met Scott ever, I wouldn't honestly have, like, any of the musical knowledge that I have now. Like, there's there's so much that I, I learned from him and, like, all my musical taste basically came from Scott. It's yeah, like, yeah, I, I so appreciate that. I did get a lot. From, I did get a lot from the cat too. That reminds me. Do either do any of you guys have Scott's uh, Scott's contact? 
Yeah, I talked to him. Um, so I actually saw him last year. So he, so it was Josh's funeral um, thing my parents were having, and he just called me out of the blue, which was the first time in fucking three, four years I talked to him. Yeah. And uh, he's like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in town because he, he saw that Josh passed away, so he was." He was there, and then I, I saw him for a little bit at the funeral. But yeah, I got I saw his number. It's still the same number and everything. But I'll, I can pass it on to you. But I think he'd definitely be a cool guy to get on here and just oh, cool. yeah, talk about sure. the old times. Oh, I here. haven't I haven't talked to Scott in like over ten years for sure. Legit. Yeah, he was he was doing good though. Yeah, so okay, good. good man. Like he's the uh, like Robert. I feel like yeah. I feel like everybody that comes on, we've all like at one point or another talked mentioned that like good god it would be like great to catch up with that fucker so so Robert he was scott, fucking if you're listening we're coming for you <laughs> martin scott yeah he was the cornerstone man <laughs> like his dad was at the funeral too because like his dad apparently worked with josh at uh alcoa oh. for a while so marty yeah yeah that, remember that diesel mercedes jesus christ <laughs> <laughs> He's so fucking sedan. He was gnarly. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, I was talking with, you know, I did. I was talking with Troy on that pod. Yeah, I've been meaning to listen to that. I saw that pop up and, today on Twitter. And uh, yeah, it was great, man. Um, but you know, one of the things I told him is like in reflection, uh, I consider him one of like the kind of like backbones of the friend group because uh, as soon as he kind of joined up with DFR, it became it started like this. this process of building the super group of, of friends i think yeah and, and troy was always willing to drive everyone dude ever since he was always a sober guy <laughs> ever since i was a kid man troy was always like i don't know like uh, and this is what i love one of the things i always loved about him is like he was always game like game for you to do something stupid if that's what you wanted to do but he'll and, but he would drive you to it he'll be there and he'll <laughs> document it and he'll fucking watch it and he'll like laugh his ass off at you while you're doing it you know yeah, uh, I don't know if you guys I talked just, about it, but like after the Grange closed, I mean, me, Rex, and uh, and Troy went to so many concerts in Seattle, and Troy always, like, even if he didn't like the band, he would still drive us. You know, he took yeah. us to like All Shall Perish and Barrier Dead, and you guys uh, went to dra- you guys saw what Dragon Force Horse Band that that, that show? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Horse yeah, and, 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 and Troy would know. Troy. Troy would be at fucking school at the table, fucking 7 a.m. with us. Yep. <laughs> Even though you guys got home at 2 a.m., the dude never missed a day of school. Always so solid, man. And you're right, dude. He was always going to sh- going to to shows and driving, like driving all of us, man. And uh, that'd be that'd be a fun like catch up on some, con- some of the concerts you guys went to. Uh, but yeah, you know, yeah. But talking with him, you know, I was just like I kind of realized that like you know he was one of those sort of. For me, like he definitely members. and Scott's another one. He definitely bridged the gap just because, as, as you said, that like, so like when they kicked out Josh Deal on DFR, mm-hmm. and Calvin happened to know Troy, so he got him involved, and then like, so then like me and Elliot and Rex kind of co mingled with Troy there, and then that kind of led to us kind of getting involved with you know you and David and. Then it flowed over to Troy being so entertained by me playing Tony Hawk Pro Skater (laughs) (laughs) that he would be like, dude, come over and see how fast you can beat Tony Hawk Pro Skater. It was like the fucking summer before our our 10th grade. And that's just kind of where it all started, where the whole group came together and we're just at Vines establishment every fucking day after school. Yeah, dude. Well, and like I said, I think I think Troy's one of those people, and I think uh, Scott's Scott's one too. Cause Scott, you know, I yeah, think, sure. You know, we introduced like a few other elements to the to the crew, but you know, yeah, either way, man, like it would be it would be great to catch up with that cat. So he, he's he's definitely. Ne- I kept telling Troy, I was like, he's next. He's on my list. I have a list of you fuckers, and I'm crossing them <laughs> off one at a time. <laughs> It's like the scene from Billy Madison. Dude, that's exactly what Troy said. People to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> the lipstick on. The lipstick on crosses the name of the list. 
That's exactly yes. what Troy said. Glad I called that guy. And I was like, I, was like, yeah, I put lipstick on him every time I do it. <laughs> That's how I imagine your nights end, Jared, after all these podcasts. I'm just like, ah, oh, lipstick in that. Glad I called that guy. <laughs> I called that guy. <laughs> he just walks into the auditorium with a hunting rifle, shoots a dude, thumbs up, and leaves. Well, that's just, you know, I think that's just Steve Buscemi for you. You can get away with it. He's that. the best. <laughs> Steve Buscemi, he's the best. <laughs> oh, man. He was a New York firefighter before he became an actor. Really? That's fucking rad. I didn't know that. Yep. Yep. There you go. I wonder if you can still I think people out. Yeah, I think he was like. Reservoir Dogs was one of his like first big ones. Yeah. Ones. Oh, for sure. Dude, I keep wondering. Speaking of uh, Tarantino movies, you know, I keep wondering what Tarantino's next movie is going to be, and if it will be his last one. He was just on Rogan, and he said he's still sticking to it. Ten, ten movies, and he's done. So which I think some people think are just going to be like he's just going to do Kill Bill three, which I think that would be a cop out. Yeah. Yeah. Although Which was he was even see. saying he thought, uh, he, like, he kind of wishes that Once Upon a Time in Hollywood would have been his, like, last one. I would have been good. I mean, it met up with the whole, rep, his, like, retcon history that he did, yeah. you know? Yeah. Dude, I don't know. I mean, like, yeah, he's. Either way, I'm just, yeah. However, he chooses to end it. Like, even if, he, even if he didn't do another movie after Once Upon a Time. Uh, God, dude, like, I, like, what a fucking spread of movies, that guy, like, you think about, like, individuals that are kind of, like, living legends in a way, and, like, I'd, I'd say, like, director, like, in terms of, like, film and whatnot, he's probably, like, a living, the current living legend. He's up he's, there, like, yeah. You know, in especially. In this kind of way. In yeah. Way. Yeah. yeah, Caleb hates Tarantino. I don't hate Tarantino. I, I don't well, like him as a person. Do you, yeah, I hate everything. <laughs> I hate everything. But, but that's, 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 that's <laughs> That's how that's how you have to play it in 2021. It's like uh, you know you're constantly separating for sure. personal and, and creative, and so it's like I, I love Tarantino's work. Do I care for him as, as an individual? Oh, yeah, he's not the greatest person in the fucking world, but see, like I don't love all of his movies. Like I've seen quite a few of them, and they're like objectively very good, no question. Yeah, uh, but like Pulp Fiction just like is stressful and it gives me anxiety. Um, God, I love Pulp Fiction. Uh, Inglorious Bastards. I like Christoph Waltz in anything, even though he's a terrible Nazi. But he's just so good. It's like, okay, Christoph Waltz is in that one, so that's cool. He's, and the same same thing with Django. It's rough. He's just a good bad guy. No, but so. but he's a, he's a good guy. And, but a good guy. And, and yeah. it, I just I love him. And then uh, Kill Bill. I really enjoyed because I've always. Uh, like Uma Thurman was my first crush when I was like a really little kid. Never she was actually. Poison Ivy. Oh, Ooh, I love that Batman movie. So cheesy, but I was like, okay, okay. Everybody, cool. Well, and then Hateful Eight came out. It was I I don't know. I like most of Tarantino stuff, but Hateful Eight's not. I don't think I've ever actually watched that. Movie. It is so fucking slow. Holy shit. I like that's, Death that's, Race. That's the thing. Really. Was it Death Race or Death, Death, Death Proof? Death Proof. Yeah. yeah, Death Proof was cool. I, I do always, I do like those Grindhouse. I haven't I haven't seen all of them. No, so. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of agree with you, JMO. Like the Hateful Eight is probably the slowest paced Tarantino movie, and yeah, it does sort of drag. You have to really want to be in, get invested in that movie to watch it. Because it's almost like, if I remember right, like right at three hours, and it all oh. takes place in a fucking cabin. Yeah. Like oh. that's it. There's no scene changes really. Or... Really? Oh. Check check this, dude. So apparently, and it's on Netflix, but apparently that's not even like the that's like the, the theatrical cut of the movie. So yeah, the there's a director's movie. cut too. Yeah, that's Jesus supposed to be Christ. like you know the whole picture and the whole story. It's like split up into two of those, basically. Oh, well, I know he didn't. I do that. He almost. I watch that he one. almost didn't. Uh, but, I want to say he almost didn't make that movie because the script got leaked. Um, and that would, yeah. I remember that whole thing, that whole fiasco. Of that. So. Yeah. I mean, 
mean, I, either way, I, like I said, though, I, I'm interested to see how he ends his career because there's all sorts of random rumors, right? So apparently he penned a Star Trek script that actually was like yeah. brought to, uh, you know, some studios and the people were kind of like into it, but he, you know, sort of was saying that he's back. In the, there's no way he's gonna make it, you know. <laughs> But, it's like, just a fan fiction thing he made. <laughs> yeah, like, what a fucking wild movie that would be to go off on, though. Like, Tarantino ends his career on, on, on Star Trek. <laughs> Maybe he'll on, uh, he... like, keep writing movies, but just not making them himself. That's what I'm wondering. He, he was on Rogan writing. a couple months ago, and he said that he might try and move into, like, playwriting, actually. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, that's the thing so, about his, about his no in particular is that his... Uh, and this is like big really showcased in, in the Grindhouse movies when he, it was like him and Robert Rodriguez is that like his movies are very dialogue heavy right they're dialogue centered oh, for sure. around, you know yeah. and, and they culminate into like something whereas like uh, even though I have similar like Rodriguez is just like you know in your face fucking craziness the entire time uh, but uh, yeah so that I mean that would be like interesting to, like if you switch to something like that I could see that like you know sort of like writing some like actual maybe plays trying to get those produced yeah he he did he did no i'm wrong i'm sorry for whatever reason i was thinking that he he didn't do sin city that was somebody else right no that was that was um, that was eli roth no that was rodriguez uh, robert rodriguez okay that's that was the connection then because yeah i remember for whatever reason i thought that he maybe he was involved in some way but no, no, I like that no. movie. It's I take crazy. that back. I don't think I don't think, Rod, I don't think Rodriguez was the. I think actually Frank Miller was the director of that. Movie. Oh, there Frank, you go. Yeah. Frank Miller did the the graphic novels. I know for sure. He did, but he uh, that was like one of the crazy things about that movie is that he, I believe, is that he directed. It was like his first time directing, or or was it the? Let me look. Well, I'm looking at it. It, it was uh, Frank Miller, Robert Rodriguez. Okay. Okay. Uh, I was thinking Eli Roth because Eli Roth is kind of in that clan of Tarantino. He was, I think he was the bear Jew in the Glorious Bastards. He was. Yeah. I was, I was thinking of the the, the the movie The Spirit. That's the movie that Frank Miller. Oh, fuck right? that movie. Which, yeah, that movie was that movie did not turn out very well. I was like so excited for it. I'm like, oh, is this like a second Sin City? And then it was no. It was, it was not, not, not nearly as good as I was expecting. Sin City was dope though. The second Sin City movie that they eventually came out with. Oh, I forgot they made a second one. Was that the, a Dame to Kill for? Yeah. Or was, was that all, the first one? I think it was also good, but you know, I, 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 it's like a weird property to mess with. I think because it's like it's a very specific. I don't think we'll ever see another Sin City movie. I guess what? It is. Yeah, a Dame to Kill for was the second one. So. Yeah. I don't think I saw that one. You remember Mickey Rourke in that fucking movie? Oh, yeah. Jesus. Dude, you guys remember Mickey Rourke in The Wrestler? Dude, I still I love that movie. Fucking gnarly, dude. Yeah, well, no, don't, don't Mostly because of Mar- Marissa Tomei, isn't it? But, that, uh... movie, <laughs> that movie is actually really awesome. It's an Aronofsky fucking hit, man. But but Rourke just looks so fucking gnarly in that movie as like a as a actor, I guess. But anyway, yeah. Mickey right, Rourke, guys. if you're listening, hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well, Mickey. All right, He's guys. listening. We're about two ten into this, so I'm gonna call, I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna call it oh, right damn. here. All right. Yep. Um, I do think that we should, Jameson. I think this playlist thing that we we gotta keep flushing this idea out more and more because I think it's a really fun idea. So I, I like, think. What? Maybe going through this like a better idea would be for each episode just take one playlist. That's what I you was know, thinking. somebody do it and then just go through that one instead of bouncing in between. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I, I actually would think that I think that we should do that uh, in the future here. So like it's next like a... we'll do Nick's Nick's playlist. Nick, you better listen to this fucking podcast. <laughs> no, I told him I was po- I I told him see he, he sent me a Snapchat. So then, I, I told him I was doing this. And then the week after, I Dusty, you should put together, you should, you should put together a playlist, and that way we can, we can take that one up to, like, and listen to it. Yeah, I gotta cultivate this. Um, there was one story that I thought about today, which I, I, I need to have it with Fitz on here. It was the, the Jared getting out of work like 
via getting hit by a car. Oh yeah. <laughs> story that I think we need to deep dive into that whole saga. <laughs> The multiple times that David hit you with his car, permuting it out of shit. <laughs> it's, it did become a trend for a little bit. <laughs> hit me with your car. I don't want to go to work. Multiple, you didn't actually have to hit me, but he can still fucking hit you. <laughs> well, you know, Fitz is authentic. Uh, that's what I like about the guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is, it's gonna, this is a deep dive. But yeah, we'll no, I'll, I'll, I'll work on it this week. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. We'll go so. from for sure um guys i just really appreciate you guys you guys getting on here with me again and like i i just i want to say that like i really enjoyed the playlist and just overall in general because you guys are like i appreciate that you guys are exposing me to stuff that you're into uh and that helps me kind of broaden my horizon so just like yeah, thanks same. a lot for sending those my way and Dusty, I want one from you because, like Jameson mentioned in the text messages, he said that that you'd probably have some really good tracks on yours. So that like, yeah, I gotta I gotta deep dive into what I've been listening to lately. I'm I'm a trendy person, so I'll just go through like waves where I'm just into one th- one band, you know, for a while. Well, and maybe so. we put like a like a stipulation on it, like. I don't know what 25 songs or less yeah. and then don't maybe you could go hours. through if it's 25 songs you could go through all of them in an episode yeah. you know yeah. well, or just something you can listen to at work all day and just be like all right be I'll, down I'll, with it. yeah i'll yeah. have to bear mine down a little bit and uh and yeah i'll, I'll uh, condense i gotta I'll, I'll do that yeah there's definitely we some, want the cream on top bro I, I, I just got carried away i was like oh i like this song like for me it'll be it'll be uh 2112 but 30 times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> get through that it, it's actually a it's it's under pressure and uh ice ice baby but it's russian roulette so you're not sure which one you're gonna get it's it goes just two, two songs it's on shelf. <laughs> you're like is this ice ice baby is this under pressure son of a bitch you can't <laughs> It's a good drinking game. You have to guess. You just have to guess. You'll die. All right. Dear Hot Dogs, thank you for listening to the sound of our voices. I promise you, we are real people. Uh, uh, Guys, I ask this at the end of every episode. It's becoming a trend. Somebody come up with some last words. Jameson, what do you got? Uh, So the other day at work, a guy told me a, a new saying that really stuck with me, and it's having champagne taste on a beer budget. I, it really hit me. I liked it a lot. So I like that champagne taste sure. on a beer budget. That sounds like a Miller Lite slogan. <laughs> Caleb, what, what do you got? Well, nothing like inspirational, really. Just a, a small confession. Something I've always wanted to do, but um, I'm just going to admit that during this entire um, recording slash Zoom meeting, I, I haven't been wearing pants, and it's Whoa. fucking great. Dude, I knew it. Podcast. Oh, um, Waist down, you're a new man. <laughs> I just went from six to midnight. Hell yeah! <laughs> One way ticket to midnight. Wanted yeah. heavy, <laughs> heavy metal. Are those, <laughs> so are, are those your party words? There it is. Uh, right, well, I was, I'll say this: I'm a man. I can change if I have to. I guess, as Red Green would say, that's the man's prayer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, good for yeah. I like that. Yeah. I missed Red Green. Alright, I'm gonna work on my I'm gonna work on my champagne taste Get, <laughs> in between the next podcast. Uh, who knows? Maybe it'll change. But <laughs> Take it your really off. depends on if I'm wearing pants or not. So there you go. <laughs> guys, much love to each one of you. I hope you guys have a good rest of the night. Let's talk soon. We'll do another one of these like the next week or so. Sounds sure. good. Sounds good. Sounds right. good. Hey, have a good night, guys. Good night, everybody.